back to Crime Time with Jess. This stream, my lovelies, is not going to be about true crime, okay? Because we do have to take little breaks from stuff like that because it's heavy stuff. So I wanted to do something different. It's Saturday night. Uh, instead of drowning myself in, in true crime tonight, hey, Grandma, I think it would be fun if we did a little matchmaking. If we had some singles that want to come on, maybe come up on panel, maybe call in. Okay. Yes, Grandma. And we're going to try to match people up. I mean, you never know. If you like each other, well, then you exchange your deets. If you don't, then you'll see each other on the YouTube streets. No harm, no foul. Um, please don't be like cyber stalking people and doing weird stuff if they don't like you. Um, but I think it would be fun. Hi, Lily. Lily, are you single? I mean, you don't have to be single to be on this stream. I just want you to know that. You don't have to be single to be on the stream. But if you are interested, if you want to put yourself out there and just try something new. I have recently became single after 10 years. Okay? So I'm not necessarily looking to date, but I just kind of want to see how this is going to go. Quite frankly, people have told me that the dating world is, it, it's been pissed in, it's been pooped in, it is just tainted all to hell. So I've been a little scared. So maybe this is a little bit of a test run. I don't know. Hi, Sky. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Hey, girl, don't be afraid. Lily, I'm single, but I'm too shy to go on panel. You can come up anonymously, Lil. You come right up, up anonymously. You do not have to show your face. You can just talk. We're kind of like doing a, have you guys seen that Love is Blind? You seen that? Love is Blind and they, they don't see each other. They don't lay eyes upon each other. They literally just talk to each other and they get to know each other in that way. And it creates a, a stronger bond, I feel. She said, I'm good. She's just here for the show. Well, you know, again, I'm single. But the fear of going through that, again, no. <laughs> I will also acknowledge that my picker is off for myself, not for everyone else. I feel like I'm a good matchmaker for other people. There's one particular person that I'm, I'm hoping is watching um, and that will come up and chat with us. Thusu wherever he's at out there in the, in the YouTube world. Hey, Colleen girl, Colleen, are you single? Are you single? I need to know everyone that's single. Can we just get a show of hands of like who's single Lily? I would, if it was a little later here, still loud at my house, we just ate homemade cinnamon rolls. <laughs> yeah. There's darn kids, you know, like that's another thing you have kids and you're trying to date. I, how, how does this all work? I, I don't even know. It, it's just, I've watched some of my friends attempt doing dating on online apps and they've about like thrown their phones through walls and you know, they just were over it. They hated it. <laughs> so I was like, Oh, well let's do some, um, YouTube anonymous dating. Why not? Uh, so, Oh, Colleen, you are single. I did not know, girl. I did not know. So we have a whole room of single women, except grandma. Grandma is married to a bullfrog. He's not really a bullfrog, but she calls him a bullfrog. So Nance is here. Nance is here for all of it. Nance, where are the penis havers? Um, not that that matters because everyone has their own sexual preferences. So if you like the same gender, uh, no harm, no foul. We all date who we want, right? So uh, single women, single women, I, I don't know if you're bi, if you're gay, it doesn't matter. Um, 
but <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, if if anyone knows where the sauces people are, they're probably over on Jim's stream. I don't think we want to tap into that, but <laughs> you never know. Um, so, <laughs> Lily, I like men. Me too. Uh, I'm straight, but I definitely have, um, you know, are no people that that are not straight, and that's well. But who cares, you know? Uh, the chorizos. Hey, <laughs> you're blushing, Grandma. Why are you blushing? We like the peen. Up oh, here's Lauren Dellen. I know Lauren Dellen is single. Lauren Dellen is single. I don't know if she's ready to mingle. Glory, are you ready to mingle or no? We have a whole room uh, of women who are just like, yeah, I'm here. Uh, we're bringing the sausages. And the sausages are over there probably watching, you know, car videos on YouTube and don't even know this is happening. The missed opportunity. Jeez. I'm going to keep talking shit about guys until they show up. They get mad enough to show up and start arguing with me. And then you guys can have your pick. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. I, Colleen, I just love people. Okay, so Colleen's open. Colleen's open. Oh, Glory. Look at Glory. Yes, Glory and Dellen. It depends on who is there. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. I mean, Jim... Jim has been the one male YouTube creator that has somehow, you know, managed to endear himself to lots of other men. So if we have to go over there and yank them out of chip stream, um, so they could stop being angry and lashing out. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. We, we might have to, to do that. Or we might even have to set up something with Jim. Like Jim, you know, can you get some of your best guys? Like Robbie might want to sit it out because, because Robbie's really upset. I don't know what Robbie's mad about. He was just, he's just mad. Um, and I don't think he's in a dating mood. So <laughs> uh, Colleen is saying, yeah, no labels. F up. <coughs> you go girl. No labels for Colleen. <coughs> <coughs> Glory's here with popcorn. I'm just saying, I, I would love to wait for the first person to call in. Where is our Thusu? Oh, Robbie can't return. Did we block him? Is he blocked? Is he? Oh, oh yeah. Because, oh, shit. I almost forgot about his whole entire meltdown about going after you. You mixed them too strong, girl. <laughs> I, I just, well, he was kind of just all over the place. So I, it was kind of crazy, but either way, uh, Gloria Dellen, I hit monetization yesterday. Yes, Glory, you go, mama, get that money. You, you've certainly worked for it. Always at the court cases, always doing your thing. Glory, can I be your, can I be your spokesperson? Can I like tell everybody all about you. So you're just, you know, she, she's paralegal. She's a good woman. Never been married. No kids. I, what more could you ask for here? Brody, beauty brains. Oh, somehow I accidentally muted my mic. Uh, grandma's saying that was a mental issue. He needs to heal before he comes back in here. <laughs> oh, geez. He, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to get too hung up on Robbie. Maybe he was having a bad relationship day. I really don't know. I, that sound like it. Maybe he got in a fight with the boyfriend. Super pissed. I think he was pissed off about that, actually. Wasn't he? Didn't he say something? If, if my memory recollects, he's pissed off at his boyfriend. It, I, I can't remember. I don't remember. He, he's just angry. Anyway, see, another angry person that's in a relationship. Um, we, <laughs> a singles out here, we're, we're just out here. We're just out here like, hey, do you want to love me? And, you know, people are like, no. <laughs> do you want to love me? No. 
Um, he was angry. At, oh, yes. He, he was very angry with the LDS church. I, I almost forgot. Very pissed off with the church. Glory, uh, Robbie just had an entire meltdown about the LDS church. Not today. Uh, I don't know if you were on that live stream. but And then he just attacked grandma for no reason. So he's he's been um he's been banned from the channel. His anger got the best of him, and uh, he's been watching Jim a lot, I think. And uh, he just you know he just let it roll. He just let it fly. Flipped right out. Um, went on a giant rant about the LDS Church, his boyfriend, and then he just decided that Grandma was going to 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 just take the brunt of all of his stuff. Oh yes, Grandma had the audacity. She, that's what it was. Uh, she, she did. She said that she had met some nice people that that were from the LDS Church, and he he did not take that well. So, Gloria is saying no. Was this the one last night? No, no, no. This was. I what was it like a week or two ago, Grandma? It's like a couple weeks ago. But uh, once Grandma said that she had met some nice LDS people, shit really hit the fan. <laughs> he just went right off the rails at her, and it, it was it was a sight to be seen. So I just felt like I was watching, I, I don't even know, something insane uh, and trying to get his attention and calm him down and stopping him from attacking Grandma. He just... He just wouldn't do that. I don't know why. Yeah, you definitely did miss that one. Uh, it wasn't pretty. It was not pretty. <laughs> it was It was really bad. Glory, I know some nice LDS people, some a little too nice. Yeah, well, we've talked about this before. Um, you know, that's... That's kind of the thing that I think endears LDS people to others is that they are just so genuinely nice. But, you know, you pull back that curtain and there's a lot of things going on. So obviously that's not going to be true for every single LDS person or family, but there's a lot that it is true for. So and Glory has pointed out multiple times that it's not really any different from any other religion, that it's the same way. You know, Christianity, they have people that just are not true true Christians, and they pretend. Um, they look all nice from the outside, and then you pull back the curtain, and, you know, it, it's a giant mess. Um, and any other religion you want to name um, all have their issues. So... We're not singling singling them out here are going to go on a, a Robbie rant. We'll just call it a Robbie rant about the LDS church. Uh, Grandma, you were talking to Thusu and didn't see much. Yeah, I was talking to Thusu. Um, and I, well, I saw him kind of going off at you because I, I think I had to mute him at some point when he was up here. And he got really pissed off that I muted him. But he was just, he was just losing his mind. Lauren Dillon, it drives me nuts when people get so into forgiving people that they get upset if you think they deserve their just desserts. Yes, and that's where the too nice thing comes in with the LDS church, Glory. Is that, you know, I always go back to that to that Netflix documentary about that one case abducted in plain sight. I mean, these people were so nice that they literally let their daughter be abducted twice. And that sounds crazy abducted twice by the same man. But if you understand the LDS culture and you know, it's like a keep sweet type thing, keep sweet, be nice. You know, it, it opens the doors for these kinds of things to happen. Um, that man that abdu abducted the, this, this family's daughter, not once, but twice. And they would not prosecute him. You know, when Gloria Dillon is saying this, that's exactly what I'm thinking of. The Sea Org. You're a nice Mormon? Well, the Sea Org would indicate Scientology for me. See? So, are you a Scientologist? Have we been over this? 
See, you do exist like unicorns. <laughs> Allie? Yeah, I don't know where Allie is, Nance. I tried to call her, um, and she's just, she's she's not having it. You are in Scientology. How interesting. Um, so I've looked at a lot of Scientology stuff. Um, I don't know where to start this line of questioning, and I don't want to put you like on the spot, but where do we start with that? Um, you know, I'm just going to say, jokingly, but kind of real, that if you need someone to tell you what's wrong with your life, I will do it for free. I won't make you buy any books. I won't make you do any auditing. And I won't make you tell on your family and friends or, or whoever. Um, I'll just tell you how screwed up you are for free. So <laughs> you can show, I can show you where Tom Cruise lands his helicopter. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's worth the money, honestly, because I think Tom Cruise is a little out there. Uh, nothing's wrong with me. Nothing's wrong with my life. I'm rich. My family all love me. Oh, cause you're rich. <laughs> you're rich. Your family all loves you. Uh, yeah, well, you know, you might want to watch those family members. I'm just saying, because you, your family's got to love you if you're rich or poor. They have to, you know, if not, then it's just conditional love. <laughs> I'm just saying. If your claim to fame is I'm rich and my family all loves me, mm, I'd be a little worried. Nance, I'm going to like Sea Org. Okay, is Sea Org really in Scientology? Um, or can we joke about this? <laughs> I don't want to offend anybody. Oh, they, so yes, they are, they are definitely in the Sea Org. Listen, we could talk Scientology all day. I, I don't want to do it because we really can. I just listen. Oh, they loved you when you lived on the streets too? Well, okay. So unconditional love, Sea Org. I see your little badge and stuff. So what's your, what are you, you work at the Interna International Base in Helmet, California. He Hemet. Is it, is it pronounced Hemet, California? Are you like high up there or like, what's your, what's your title? Because I've seen like where, you know, you have to be like a super Lieutenant general to start making $5 an hour when you're in Scientology. So I'm just curious. <laughs> Gloria Dell. Hey Jess, have you heard when Brenner appears in court? It's not on the court set yet. I, I don't know yet. Glory. I don't know. But when we find that out, you know that's going up. Uh, the Sea Org. I'm about to leave and they will brand a suppressive person. I'm a groundskeeper. Oh, you're about to get out. Good for you. Good for you. And yes, you will definitely be a suppressive person. You're going to be a bad person. They're going to alienate you from everyone that you know and love. But we're always here, Sea Org. Okay? And I think you do know that there's a lot of support for people that do leave Scientology. There's tons of people that have left and they've been very well supported from what I've seen. Um, the Sea Org, ever since David Miscavige bashed Shelly and banished her to international base, our business has gone in the gutter. Yeah, listen, South Park really didn't do it any favors either. I mean, South Park, their Scientology episode put put it so far out into the masses and made fun of it so heavily. I feel like it was kind of like a little bit of a turning point for you guys. Um, and what kind of husband just like keeps his wife as like kind of like a slave? I mean, she's like locked down somewhere. She's still alive. She hasn't been seen in what... When's the last time Shelly Miscavige has been seen? It's been over a decade, correct? Um, Glory is saying, I'm afraid I'll be first thing on Monday morning before I can get up there. Oh, I hope not. I don't think there's anything to appeal at this point. He's just been charged. They can argue at a preliminary hearing. 
if it wasn't an indictment from a grand jury. Yeah, I and I wonder if it was. Grandma, it was so funny, though. <laughs> uh, Gloria Dillon, I want to see the SB Scientology episode. Oh, you have to watch it. The South Park Scientology episode is is just one of their best. It's, one, it's some of their best work. <laughs> the Sea Org. I'm either going to leave or try to convince the upper levels to start a splinter group. You know, if you try to convince the upper levels to start a splinter group, you're really going to be putting yourself in some sort of danger. I honestly would, would leave. Yeah, yeah, 12 years. That's that's crazy. You want to see the worldwide privacy tour? <laughs> yeah, listen, um, that was with the Sussexes. Sussexes, uh, royal family that Scientology did a recent episode on. But, yeah, that Scientology episode was hilarious. Uh, I remember laughing quite a lot during it. But I would just leave, honestly. They'd lock you in a trailer. Branch off, see. So Nance, Nance is going against me here. Branch is like, nope. Or Nance is like, nope, branch off. Uh, see, or we can take all their money and property. No one likes David Miscavige. He's ruined our image. I feel like he is the image of Scientology, though. Him and Tom Cruise, like you say, you say Scientology just to average people that don't even really, you know, have never really looked into Scientology. Um, they're going to think one of two people, probably first Tom Cruise, and then next David Miscavige. So it's kind of like taking the, the, the face of it away. Uh, and then you have to remember that you're going to have to deal with, uh, with, with Mr. Cruise. And Nance wants a cut. She, what kind of cut are you getting, Nance? You know they pay these people pennies. Nance is smart. She sees all the potential. John Travolta up. Oh, yep. Lauren Dell is going to start ticking them off here. Uh, is, are, are there any single people that want to date? Damn it. Nance, why don't you date Sea Orc? What, what's, I mean, you guys have a connection here. I, I'm just asking. <laughs> I'm just asking. Don't be mad at me. Just, you know, like why do you guys, you guys know each other off screen. You want to roll in a pile of cash? So you're going to wait until C or go, goes ahead and, you know, gets his hands on Tom Cruise's money, becomes the head of Scientology, and then you're like, I'm in. <laughs> Look, C or saying, Nance, date me. Why don't we date? You know what? There you go. It's done. Match made. First match done. Nance and C or excited to see where they're going to go. They're dating now. Um, Nance, if, if the criteria becomes that you have to become the next Shelly Miscavige, are you willing to give this up for love? <laughs> we have to know. Look at Sea Org, easy as pie. You know what? Don't talk about your girlfriend like that, Sea Org. Okay. <laughs> Nance, thank you, Jess. You're welcome. I'm just up here to spread love. Thusu is here. Hi, sir. How are you? Are, are you ready to single and mingle? Be my Shelly, Nance. <laughs> Nance, be my Shelly. All in caps. I love it. I love it. You guys got to stop. Be my queen. Hide me, Zaddy. <laughs> Run science with me. You guys are too much. You guys are getting the trout, bitch. <laughs> Stop. Stop it. You guys. This is hilarious. You guys cannot be the face of my first matchmaking endeavor if you're going to act this way. At least pretend like you're really in love now. Sea <laughs> org, get in the trunk, bitch. Keep that for the bedroom. You And it should be, can I get in your trunk? So, videotape, videotape our interview so I know it's real. Uh, Dusu, I'm single, but not sure how ready I am for mingling. Dusu, you know what? 
you know what, great sir, you are beyond ready. You, me and Allie had a, a tiny little discussion, uh, and we both agree that you are extremely ready to date. It is just fear that holds you back. So we're going to have to work through that fear, Thusu, because I still haven't figured out if you're a serial killer or if you are just the world's most perfect man. And there's a fine line. That might sound crazy, but there is a fine line there. I'm just think Ted Bundy. At least they're laughing better than my poor attempts at one-liner jokes. Uh, well, you could try. Come on up. <laughs> Nance, I love you. Okay, listen here. You love birds. Okay. Get yourself a hot babe from chat. <laughs> exactly. Well, let me tell you, Nance. I, I don't know if you know Thusu, um, but he he is he's roughly 40s. Uh, he's a single guy. Uh, he's never married, no children. Um, and he's yet to find love. You know, he, he put career first. Uh so now he's at a point where he's kind of questioning, do I want to do this or am I okay just being like this? But I think there's some curiosity there or he wouldn't be questioning, right? The Sea Org. Thusu, go on panel. I'll wingman for you. See, Sea Org's already in a relationship. We haven't even been on 30 minutes and Sea Org has already found himself a girlfriend. Thusu, if this is not, I've just proven my matchmaking sir. <laughs> is he single? Yes, he is. Nance. Nance is taken. Yes. We, we want to make that very clear that Nance is taken here. Um, and, and now she's trying to bring toe jam. Allie. Hi. Meow to you. Oh, girl, girl, you're here. Uh, perfect timing because guess who else is here? Our fave. Our, oh, 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 you guys. So my laptop just, what? And my phone's dead. Okay, that was really weird. So my laptop, why is this not, it is plugged in. Hold on, hold on. Because it's saying my lappy is not plugged in. Okay, plugged in. We're good. So we're not going to be losing connection here. Um. Yeah, Allie's in Discord, Grandma. Allie's in Discord. So, and also, Thusu, you need to get in Discord. You need to get in Discord. See, org at Nance, I don't know, but Toe Jam's wife is a lucky lady, whoever she is, if she exists. <laughs> who is Toe Jam? Like, who even names themselves this? Allie, how was your gummy sleep? Probably really good, Grandma. If I had to guess, Thusu, uh, are you coming up? Do, do I need to put the thing in? Listen, we can't go over like a bunch of stuff. We're, we're going to do like a, a speed dating. Let's do a, a YouTube speed dating. This is where you're just going to give a briefness about yourself. You don't picture yourself up on some stage trying to sell yourself to everyone, but you know, Hey, I'm roughly this age. This is what I like to do. This is kind of who I am. Blah, blah. Uh, what are you like? I, I think that's fairly easy. And don't think about it like, oh, my God, what am I going to say? I like to clip my toenails. Like, no. Okay? <laughs> Just Toe Jam is a handsome gentleman. Well, he clearly has a wife, Nance. We, I mean, he can come over and watch. He can live vicariously through Fusu and Allie. And, and Colleen, and who else is in here? I mean, SeaWorld's taken now. Nance is taken. It's absolutely ridiculous. Lauren Dellen's single. I'm single, even though I, I keep saying that. But I, I just can't, you know. I, I'm in Thusu's spot for a different reason. I'm looking at this dating stuff, and I'm like, you know, looks like it could be fun. But... I don't know. You know, that's how I'm looking at it with like, if I, if I had to pick one emoji to describe my.
Okay, I hope you guys can hear me because it's showing me that I had, it had kind of cut out. But yeah, so that's how I'm kind of looking at the dating world. How do the ladies feel about big buffoon Samoans? Samoans. Well, I'll tell you how I feel about Samoans because I, I am single. Um, they beat my grandfather and my uncle up. And I, I'm not even joking because I don't know why I'm laughing. But it's not funny. But my my grandparents and, and some of my family live in Hawaii. And they, they lived there since I was five. And my grandfather and my uncle every Thursday would go to this particular bar where they would shoot pool, have a couple beers together. And that was kind of like their thing. And one night, um, my grandmother, my grandfather, and my uncle were all leaving. And a group of Samoans, it's a true story if you can't tell, um, they, they jumped them. And they beat the crap out of my grandfather. They took his watch off of him. They took my grandmother's ring. Um, my uncle is actually a pretty big guy. But it was, it was just like a random attack. And my grandmother like broke all of our hearts when she called home. And I say home, I mean Delaware. And, you know, told us that, and she started crying and saying, you know, I looked down and your grandfather, or, you know, pop up his, you know, blood was like running out of his mouth and, and running into the gutter on the street. Um, so sorry to be a killer here. But it's, yeah, that actually happened. <coughs> Nance, bring the Samoan royalty, see? <laughs> yes, I would like to talk to the upper echelons of the Samoans about this, um, this incident with my grandfather and my uncle. Uh, it's been about 10 years, but it happened, damn it. What type of watch did the Samoans get when the... When they stole, oh, it was a very nice, it was a very nice watch. We'll just, we'll leave that there. <clears throat> didn't you, didn't know you didn't have the, oh. Okay, well, where is Toe Jam? And Thusu is ready to come up. See, everybody's playing games, but Thusu is actually ready to single mingle. Hi, sir. How are you? Hey, thanks for having me back. Why do I feel like this is a, uh, an effort to try to trick me into figuring out if I'm some serial killer? <laughs> this is an effort to trick you to see if you're a serial killer? Well, we would be the people to do it, Thusu. That's true. Um, but, I mean, like if you're a Brian Koberger, yeah, it's a little hard to detect. I mean, I don't detect, detect a, a ton of misogyny from, from you. I, I just detect, you know, really strict uh, or really hardcore. Well, no, not hardcore. That's that's a little much. But just like really strict ideals that you have. I, I would describe it that way. But so, I, you know, I, I could be lying, though. I mean. No, I, no. There's Why, why lie? Like, why lie? Like, it's not like the, the worst thing in the world. Uh, C or Jess and Thusu, number two matchmate. No, we could never date. You know why we, we could never date? Because Thusu's, we live very differently. Um, you know, he has these, he doesn't want to be intimate with a person until he's married. Um, that's his, that's his ideals. And I've already done that. So that, that scratches that. So you guys can put that to bed. But, um, you know, I'm not opposed to strong arming Thusu a little bit into maybe, you know, I have children and stuff like that. Thusu wants to start a life with someone fresh. And I don't blame him. I, I think that's a smart thing to do. But there are women, Allie, Allie, uh, who d don't have children. Uh, and, and, and I don't think Allie's ever been married. I don't know. She'll have to say that, but either way, she doesn't have children or anything like that. So there are women out there that are single that are, you know, I mean, I don't think Allie's beating down the walls to necessarily date someone, but I don't know that she's really opposed to it either. It's more, she hasn't found the right person kind of like Thusu. 
who has clearly refused to settle his entire life. Why would he do that now? Not that I don't think that I'm good enough. It's just clearly we have different ideals. Doesn't mean we can't be friends because I think we're friends. Right? Yeah, very true. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people are friends with, with those who have uh, contrasting beliefs and, and uh, convictions. But in terms of compatibility and, and having a relationship, so especially one that eventually uh, oftentimes leads to children and you know, long term, then, yeah, it's it, you have a different criteria. You know, And it's different also like friends – the dynamic between friends is different than a loved one. And you see that even as a viewer, as someone who isn't married or in relationships long-term, when you see your friends get into relationships and you see them get married and you see how their priorities change, you see how their demeanor may even change. And so it's just a natural progression you know, of human development as we get into different places in our lives. And I do think that you know, even having been that friend who has to see you know, others take on uh, marriage, family, and such. That is their priority. You know, that should always be number one. I, it's my belief, again, that... Well, it has to be. I mean, unless you just sure. don't give a crap about people. But, you know, when, when you're in a relationship, and especially you have children, uh, that has to be the priority. Uh, if not, I, I, I'm i not big on judging people harshly. But I, I'm going to judge you kind of harshly if you just don't <laughs> prioritize your children or your your family that you created, that just doesn't really make any sense to me. Why, why would you do that then? You know, so. But I would go even further though. I would say, I would actually, cause a lot of people, and this is where you may disagree with me. Um, yeah. A lot of people tend to prioritize their children over the relationships. What in my personal, again, perhaps idealized perspective, the spouse, the spouse relationship um, should be prioritized uh, or the children. And what I mean by that, I am that no, no, no. I, I am so happy that you are bringing this up. I just had this conversation with someone else. Um, I know exactly where you're going with this is that, you know, you should prior to prioritize the spouse over the children. Does that sound crazy to a lot of people? Yes, it does. Um, and, and the reason is just because, you know, people are like children are for life and, and you don't know if a relationship is for life. But I will tell you that when I was 16, um, my, my first real relationship, uh, that person's mother told me, um, you know, you need to put your husband before your children. Now, I'm 16. And I'm thinking, what? You're crazy. But in a lot of ways, you know, the way she explained it, she was like, you know, one day your children grow up, they get families of their own and they move out and they move on. And you are with that same person. If you don't cultivate that relationship, if you don't put anything into that relationship, you're going to find yourself empty nesting one day with a stranger that you don't even like, don't even know. Um, so it is very important in my opinion, and obviously yours to put a lot of a lot of your energy into the relationship itself. And I also think that that relationship is the base of the rest of the family. You know, if the two partners, uh, whether, you know, for you, it's going to be a man or a woman for somebody else, it, it might be two women or two men or whatever, but, but those two people are the base of the family and everything that stems from them seeps into the rest, into the children, extended family, all of that. Um, so that relationship, I feel a lot of people don't prioritize or don't put first and they put all of their energy into their children and then it sort of backfires in this way and they're kind of like, what went wrong? Well, that's what went wrong. And I don't know if that's going to make a lot of sense to people, but I do understand you and what you're saying with that. Yeah, and I, I think maybe that's something... Um perhaps people with experience begin to recognize. I, I don't yeah. know. I'm not sure how I, maybe I just figured it out just because uh, again, my priorities with um, you know, faith and so that tended, those convictions coincided with prioritizing spouse over children. And even furthermore, if you know, if you have a belief system, you know, faith in uh, God is going to be number one even beyond that. But, but yeah, that it's um, I've seen too often where, especially at near my age where, 
there is going to be a conflict though naturally because if you have people or if, if you okay so going back to dating which i guess the discussion of this if if i were to be speaking with someone right wh who is okay. in a, uh, who has children right okay. then it's going to be difficult to or more difficult to to exercise that uh when you haven't started the really you know as a step parent as it's a completely different dynamic. yeah blending it's one that's difficult to reconcile it is one of the and this is i'm just speaking from experience it is one of the most difficult things because not only would you be dating the person um you also have to get to know their children to some level um and there, there kind of has to well at least for me uh whenever i decide to dip my toe back in this this tainted dating pool um you know for me it, it definitely is going to matter if the person likes my children or not or if my children like them and and my children are <laughs> they're a lot like me uh they just are very particular with people um you know they're not just going to accept any kind of person and my children are pretty vocal they're not rude they're not disrespectful but they are vocal uh and they will they will not hesitate to say that's not the guy <laughs> and that's that's just the way my children are and you know they know me uh they know you know so uh would i would i listen to them sure if, if i felt more strongly than you know then then i would pursue the relationship uh but as long as the person wasn't detrimental to my kids like in a harmful way you know that that's why i got out of the relationship i did because he was a harmful person to to myself and, and to my children and it just yeah I, I mean you you really are dating more than just the person you are dating a family and you you have to find your 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 niche within that family um so it's it's difficult it is I, it makes it easier that you yourself don't have children because that's even harder now you have to blend children together a couple together and then it all together and that's that's very hard to do um yeah. so yeah like i i just for you as a person that does not you know ha has not been married had children i understand why you're like nah i you know i i would like to start fresh with with my own person and not take on something of that nature like and i get I, that well i've seen it too you know i've seen people who have come in without children right and it's, it puts them in a tough spot and if if the children are younger as well then they may have to deal with, you know, um, the, the, uh, biological father, you know? Um, and so, uh, if they're older, I imagine it'd probably be easier, you know, if they're past 18, because at that point it's, you know, there's not much involvement typically, but then there may be, um, well, well, yeah, because their, their opinions still matter. I mean, you know, uh, my, my 18 year old sons, he turned 18 in November. Um, he obviously still lives at home. Uh, he's about to graduate high school this year. Um, but, and, and he is the most laid back down to earth person I've ever met ever. Uh, but if he were to, to go out on a limb and say, and it, it, this isn't even something that he would say, but if he were to say, you know, mom, uh, I really don't think that guy's for you. Um, it's something, it's, it's a comment that I would take very seriously, you know? Uh, so, but for my situation, you know, my, my youngest is, she'll be seven next month. Um, yeah. And, and her father is, is in her life. And then, you know, my 11 year old, um, he's just always been mine. <laughs> he's just yeah. mine. You know, but those those are the two youngest. And, you know, that is something that you won't have to take into account because you don't have kids. Again, good move on your part. Um, but but I I took the leap and and this is how it ended up at this point. And so now I have to think about how, how do I move forward with this? 
You know, well, there are a lot of single uh, dads out there as well. So there is. Yeah, so but I'm kind cool. of like you. If I don't have to do any more mixing than, than possible, mm -hmm. that would be good. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I really don't. And I, I feel like at my age, I don't really have the patience to, to blend two children having families. I just, gotcha. I, yeah. So I mean, you, maybe it'll happen and it'll just be the greatest thing. I, who knows? I, I don't know what my future holds, but mm. I, I don't know. I, I just feel like that's not really something that I want. I I don't know what. That's why, I, that's why I'm staying out of the, the pool. I, I haven't even put like, my bathing suit on yet. Like, I'm just not ready. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. But it sounds like um, you do, you are uh, receptive to the idea of uh, dating someone without children then. It's because. Oh, yes. I've always, always preferred yeah. that. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Always, always always those curious, yeah. Well, it just, it, it makes things easier. Um, in fact, I, I've only ever dated one person that had children that were not my own. Um, and it just, you know, dealing with a, another person that is the mother of that person's children, how I always did this, and, and it's not like I've done it a hundred times, but I, I've done it. I've done it. Um, so like with my older children, you know, I made it very clear clear to my, my, my recent ex, um, when they were younger, that it, whatever, whatever decision was to be made about them, it would be done by myself and my ex-husband. Um, I felt like that was the correct way. Uh, he could have an opinion, um, and, and tell me whatever his opinion was, but other than that, whatever decision was made about our children would be decided by us. Um, and there was no us outside of the children. But I feel like it was the right thing to do because I have really well-rounded children now. You know, they're responsible. They're just good humans. They are productive human beings. And it's because, you know, me and their father to this day, we, we have no animosity. We, we are civil to one another. We are that way. There, there's no reason to be any other way. Uh, but, but they feel open to come and talk to me and their father about anything uh, because we've always kept it that way for them. You know, so how you raise your children is important with that as well. Letting a step parent come into your life is a big deal. Um, and then there has to be boundaries. Like, you know, you don't get to tell my children how to live their life or what they're going to do. You can give advice, friendly advice. Um, but you, you know, dictating and things like that, I, I would never go for it. Uh, just because it's not, it's not a step parent's place, in my opinion. Other people, I think, work that differently. I have seen other step parents that are more or less the parent. Um, so they do make pretty, you know, big decisions for that child. But in my case, I don't need that. Uh, my children have a father. Um, and so that's who, you know, whatever medical decisions, school decisions, um, discipline decisions, uh, they will be made with their father. Um, and I would see my partner as, as my partner. Um, you, does that make sense? It's all very complicated, which yeah. is why I will commend you again for doing things the way you did them. <laughs> well, I will say that a few of the things that kind of um, stood out to me is about how when you said they have a father, right? Yeah. They're your children. And uh, forgive me for... Um, uh, what are your, the ages of your children, if I may ask, or range? Are they still pretty young, all of them? Oh, no. Uh, my children are grown, but my two okay. youngest um, are 11 and almost 7, 7 next month. So 7 okay. and 11. 
still very young though. Um, so yeah. the thing is, so when you say they already have a father, yeah. as a man, you know, who, you know, what I hear when I hear that is, um, you're not needed, right? You're not needed here. Wow. So, okay. so then I'm thinking, okay, well, what am I doing here? Right. Well, well clearly just, your, your role would be with me. Exactly. You know, your exactly. role would be developing a relationship with me, but then so you, also expected to have a decent, good relationship with the children but just not a disciplinary role, a anything. But that doesn't mean that you can't play some games with them, uh, play chess with them, uh, do things like that. Do you get to be kind of the fun bonus parent that doesn't have all <laughs> the responsibility? Um, you know, you, you kind of get to be that person. So if more people stopped thinking the way that you are, like, you know, I'm not needed and maybe see it as kind of, this is kind of the best of both worlds. Like, I don't I don't have to provide, and I don't have to be like the most perfect, but I can just have fun, you know, and be a kid with, with these kids. But, you know, I'm not- but Men want to provide though. That's maybe what you're missing. So, you know, men have, whether they're men or, or not. And yeah, what's wrong with men chess, like this. Oh, jam. What's wrong with chess? <laughs> He's like, chess. Yeah, what do you mean? Just a thinking game, sir. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, uh, one of my one of my good uh, male friends um, ha has taught my 11 year old uh, chess, uh, and he loves it. And actually, last year for his birthday, I bought him a really nice chess board because he loves chess so much, uh, just from learning it from someone. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, I cut you off. No, it's alright. <laughs> um. So basically, you know, the, I guess in a way that was my point, um, which is that you're, I would, okay, so as, again, as a man looking from my perspective, the man in that case is really just there to serve you, right, as a woman in the relationship, but the household I, I dynamic has to be. I would probably take the word serve out. That's the, a little. Take the, what, the what? Serve. Oh, I see. Um, okay. Well, how about this? Yeah, I, I would admit that word. I serve. No, I, I don't think not serve. I, I would say, be a companion or a partner or someone that you can do things with, uh, share time with, um, share ideas with, share thoughts with. Um, well, tell you why though, I would use relationship with uh, things like that. But I'll tell you why, though, it, that maybe comes to mind is because it feels to me like an imbalance. And when there's an imbalance, it can give the impression then that um, one is, um, you know, serving to the needs of the other more so than one's own. So I guess the issue I would perceive is, is there an imbalance then in this, right, in this relationship, in this di household dynamic? Is there more of a um, sort of responsibility or headship from one side uh, of the relationship, like uh, the, the parent of the children, than the other side, the one who is um, not a parent, who is coming in? It almost feels like an outsider. I guess that's where... Um, well, advice. essentially, you, you would be. I mean, that's that's just kind of... You know, common sense. You would be. You, you would be coming into a group of people that that you don't know well. Um, you know, but, but would why would I, I do? Like, why would a man do someone that? Someone exactly? to my children straight away? No. Uh, it just why? Uh, you know, I might go out on a couple of dates with you and realize we just don't have that chemistry. So it, my kids would be none the wiser and and better off for that. Uh, cool. But if it became something where I knew this is headed into a certain direction. And so I need to see how my children respond to this person. Um, just naturally respond. But, but ultimately what I think children really want is just to see their parent happy. Um, and they saw me so unhappy, obviously, 
And so I think that just seeing me happy and smiling and in a good mood and, and wanting to do all these sorts of things, I think that would make all the, the world of difference for them. And if you or, or whoever, you know, just whatever, uh, if, if that was the person that was that was doing that, I think they just automatically like that person because this person is making my mother happy and sort of a best version of herself. Uh, so, so it sounds like you're looking for some, someone who is going to make you happy and they well, will be happy making Isn't you happy. Isn't that what you want? <laughs> yeah. No. Well, I mean, of course I want, I, I want someone that's going to make me happy. I mean, don't so, you? Sure. But, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, what if those types of uh, circumstances that, I, that you laid out were to make the man unhappy somehow? Then I like, would suggest the relationship not be a relationship. Gotcha. If, okay. Yeah. Because so, both people are going to have to be happy. I mean, if you're just if you're unhappy, sure. why why stay in that? And so I guess that really is the crux of the issue. Can <laughs> the situation that you laid out be? An environment which a man without children can come in into under those um, sort of guidelines and be happy, and that's the real question. And if you can find a man who can be happy under that those guidelines and within that environment, then there's a chance, you know, obviously the relationship would succeed. Yeah. Um, so for me, I would say I would have a tough time being happy in that environment. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Uh just as much as I have gotten to know you over our several conversations. Uh this is why it, it's very clear to me and I oddly, even though I do have children, I still understand you. Uh because I have always picked Thank people you. that do not have children for a reason. Um and it's not because I don't like kids. It's just I know how difficult it is. Um so it's just if I were in your position, I would definitely pursue people that did not have children, you know, mm -hmm. maybe married as long as they didn't have children, but probably not. I, I would probably go for someone like myself, like you, like not married, no kids and, and want to start that with someone. I just, I would probably do that. Uh, but then there is the flip side of, you don't know yet because you haven't done it. <laughs> and I do know because I have done it. So there <laughs> is that where, you know, if you dated someone that did have children or was married priorly or, or previously, um, they would have a wisdom that a person like yourself would not have. Um, and probably would, would guide or help steer the relationship differently because they would kind of know the path mm -hmm. if that makes sense so um, i would argue though that experience doesn't always equate to wisdom yeah uh, no uh i i'm definitely going to agree with you because i've seen people with a lot of experience and they just continue to make the same damn mistakes uh so it does <laughs> not equal wisdom 100 percent. but i feel like that's where like I'm trying to learn from what I did wrong per se with, with my ex. And it's difficult because you, you have to kind of take your own inventory. You know, you kind of have to mm -hmm. look at it and be like, Holy crap. Where? Okay. So what did I do wrong? I did this wrong. I should have did that. That was too soon for that. Uh, you, you just kind of got to go down the line, but what kind of really pisses me off, if I'm being honest, is that I feel like 10 years of my life were stolen from me. Like, if at uh, the end of this, you were just going to decide that you were just going to be a drug addict, like, <laughs> you could have saved me 10 years. You know, so I'm a little bitter about that. Like, that really kind of just... Because I, I don't even know if I would have taken this better if you just would have cheated on me. At least it would have been an actual person. But but you cheated on me with a substance. It's kind of more insulting. You know? I just... Uh, yeah, I'm it's just tough to my head around. Yeah, it, same. Like, I just... I, I still... Like, I live through this. And I still have trouble just wrapping my head around 
how, why, what is wrong with you? Like, just, I, I don't know, like those questions. And then I get even more like standoffish with people because now I feel like, well, Jesus, you know, if I, if I couldn't predict uh, a person of 10 years, uh, how can I predict anybody else? Like clearly my picker is off or something, you know? Well, we, we put up, um, <laughs> we put up facades, you know, we need to change our face depending on, you know, who we're with and what environment we're in. It's, we, it's, it's actually, it's necessary, you know, it's, it's a healthy psychological development, uh, to be able to adjust, you know, your mannerisms, how you present yourself, depending on what was the appropriate situation. But when it comes to like dating and such, especially in the first beginning stages of it, it almost feels like, and this comes from my perspective probably, but being too honest, too open can oftentimes be sort of a turnoff or people can, you know, see it as a red flag because it, I think people are used to sort of the pleasantries and almost fakeness that comes from typical dating. And so it's almost like people don't really show who they are, some of their, uh, you know, less or more rough character traits until deeper into the relationship, right? And only after a certain amount of time has sort of gone by and experience has gone by. But if some, but the thing is, if, if you're already married, right? If you've already gone through those early stages and you think, oh, I know who this person is, how much how much can you truly experience and be go through almost like a trial? Like how how much have you really experienced together uh before marriage? Well, I, I don't know if that's you, impossible. That's a question that's always bothered me because my older children that I was talking about, um, I didn't marry my my recent ex. Ten years did not marry him. Uh, my older children's father, I did marry him, but I waited five years, five years because I have a bit of you in me and I, I overanalyze too much and I just wanted, listen, this is the most ridiculous story. I, I really wanted to make sure that this person was right. Like I wanted to make sure I was right. I wanted to know him. So after two years, he proposed and I was like, no, I, I, it's not really time yet. You know, we just need some more time. We just need to like, there's nothing wrong with our relationship. I just want to see more of it. Well, after five years, I was like, okay, like I'm, I'm ready. I feel like this is right. It lasted a year. What changed? He's, he's, he's an alcoholic. He's drinking while I'm but, but mean, did he just magically become one the moment you got married? Surely there were no, certain elements. No, no, no. But it just, how this happened, you know, that really messed me up because I was like, what? You, like, he was well aware that how I felt. Like, I really don't hold back. You see, like, I'm talking very openly. Uh, and I am the same in relationships. Like, I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking, which is, you know, I, I want to wait five years because I, I want to make sure and I, I want to know who you are and, I, and and that we are, this is going to be the right thing. So he's well aware of this. So it's just, why would you do that to somebody? Uh, you knew that I was waiting. You, you knew why. Um, and then you just decide, you know, we get married. We, we do this big thing to me. And you want to start drinking like a maniac um, and, and doing ridiculous things. It just... It, it just so, it's kind of blew my mind, and I I don't know if I'm bitter or just done. But it sounds like you're, you're framing it as if he made a conscious decision to just become. Well, he did. I, that it, listen, if I decided we, you and I get married, and, and next year I'm going to start drinking, it's a conscious decision to get in your vehicle, go buy some alcohol, drink, get completely drunk, go slash somebody's tires for no apparent reason, put a hole in your chimney, uh, just do ridiculous things. Yes, I, I, that is a conscious choice. Um, being drunk or, or being on substances is not a defense to anything that you do, in my opinion. So, what ha so why for 10 years then yeah. did he not choose to do that? 
surprised. I don't know. Much. That that would be a question for him. That that's There's... not a question I can answer. I, I don't understand. I I saw the breakdown. A lot of it has to do with his parents. Um, there was one triggering moment from one of his father's friends. He has seeked his father's love. Uh, the entire time I've 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 known him. Um, and one of his dad's friends had, had just saw him out and about. He, he was out on, on a work day and saw this guy at, at a convenience store. And, and the guy said, oh, hey, you know, how are you? And um, he asked about his dad. And the ex, you know, said, I, I don't talk to him. He doesn't, he doesn't like me. And, and the guy's like, what? You know what? Like he, he was confused and that really hurt him. And it wasn't long after that, that the breakdown happened for him. But that breakdown, you destroyed a relationship. You destroyed my children's any type of love and faith that they had for you. Um, you destroyed everything. Uh, and it's just it, when people don't deal with their childhood stuff, they end up there sometimes. And then you're just hurting other people for no reason. It's just not, it's not fair. It's not okay. So, and then, and then you leave people like me in positions where now your actions, I, I have to have a reaction to it. Unfortunately, a reaction that is appropriate. And, and that's what I had to do. So, yeah, it forces your hand. Yes. Yes. But since then, has anything changed or has he remained in the exact same state? Uh, he's remained in the same state. If, well, I would say worse at this point. But okay. it's, you know, I, I, I repeatedly said to him over an 18 plus, you know, period of time that you're, you're going to lose something that money can't buy. And that would be myself and the children. Uh, those things are priceless. And when you're high out of your minds and, you, and you're not thinking, you don't care. And that's what happens. Uh, and now that he's clean, he cares a whole lot. But we were not high. And so we have not forgotten anything that you have done. And, you know, forgiveness, I, you know, for, for certain instances, I will forgive someone. And then I feel like there's some things that people do that just, to me, they're unforgivable. Uh, it doesn't mean that I walk around with a giant chip on my shoulder every day. It just means that I have nothing else for you. And you have to let them go. Sounds like. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, but, but for some people, forgiveness is everything like they, they have to, and it's just, you know, it's just how they feel like I, I'm not judging it, but they feel like they have to forgive that person in order for themselves to, to move on. I don't feel that way. I, I don't feel like I have to forgive everyone that has done anything bad to me per se. Um, depends there's some on how you, yeah. how you think of forgiveness. You know, if, if you think of forgiveness as simply, uh, oh, now um, I'll forget what happened and we'll just continue on as if it never occurred. That's not what forgiveness is. Right. You know, so when you forgive someone, like I said, you know, you have to, uh, you know, let them go. You have to not allow, I'm not going to go into too deeply, but essentially the what you're saying, I think is very reasonable, which is you, you recognize the situation a person is in, what they've done, where they're at. And you have to make a, a logical, reasonable sort of decision as to how to proceed for the sake of yourself and your family. And you can still forgive someone, you know, if they ask for forgiveness, but to but how you then move forward is still going to be um, impacted by where they're at and whether or not, you know, people, they might uh, seek change, right? They, they seek um, rehabilitation, right? And certainly then you know people will want to be seen differently but that takes that type of trust takes time so forgiveness isn't about just simply oh, okay now i trust you to do anything anymore you know what i mean right. 
right exactly and that's kind of like i don't know how much experience you have with addicts um but that's kind of the expectation you know is okay i've told you what i've done so forgive me now and just trust me and it's it's kind of ridiculous exactly yeah no it's a reason i don't uh, drink or smoke or do any drugs or anything um it's, it's, yeah it's very common, unfortunately. I, I wonder though if, you know, in your situation, it seemed like you would, it had a negative impact on your perception of marriage. But it seems like, and correct me if I'm wrong, it well, seems I don't like think the I marriage was wrong, aspect. Though. I think mm -hmm. the choices I made were correct. Um, for, you know, well, with my older children's uh, father, um, obviously, I, it, that, that wasn't correct. But I still feel that I waited an ample amount of time, but it wasn't enough, you know. And so with well, this, maybe one, there isn't such ten thing years, as and I didn't do it, and it was the right thing. So, but maybe there's no such thing as enough time. Like maybe what what resulted had nothing to do with marriage itself, but other factors other things that you had no control over yourself. Maybe you're taking on too much too much responsibility. Uh, for his actions in that case i mean if you had married you know 10 years before you know within a year you met him do you think he would have immediately turned into it it sounds like due to the triggers you mentioned it may have just been you would have been fine married for nine years right instead of dating for 10 prior to the marriage do you see, do you see what i'm saying like how much did the marriage even have an impact whatsoever the okay i, I want to address chat i i've been watching kind of Number one, Toe Jam, I think you guys are, are hilarious. I know this is more of a serious conversation. This is a single thing, but I have no problem with what you guys are saying. You guys are just ridiculous. But I do want to hear your serious question. Um, C Org is very handsome. Well, that's not a question. But I want to hear your, your very serious question. Um, but <laughs> no, I think you guys are just trolling and being funny and being fun. So do your thing. Uh, I'm listening to Thusu. Obviously, we're having a conversation, but you guys are still funny. But in time out, you're not single. So I'm in time out? Or what, what's, what do you mean? Time out has all the chicks. <laughs> Who's time out? Who's time out? Is this a person? Is this a, what is that? Seagorg is timed out or booted. Uh, what's it? Grandma, what's going on? Um, I've, I've watched some of it. Not, not everything is. We're not even trolling. We're just joking with each other. I think I will just leave. I've been timed out two times. Uh, why timed out? Um, listen, my mods are not that way, okay? Okay, yeah, they're not. Um, don't think that you're just going to come in this chat and, you know, and you're just going to get timed out. I, it's, Grandma, I don't, I haven't seen anything, unless they're attacking you, which I, I haven't seen that, but I haven't seen anything that they've said that they need to be timed out or anything. I was talking about you. Uh, Nancy's saying they always joke like that in chats. They don't speak poorly of anyone. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, Grandma, if you could just scroll back up or something and, and find it, because I, I didn't really see that. Seorg is saying he was talking to Toe Jam. It does seem like they're having their own funny, like, conversation. Um, I, I did see one of them saying, until we're timed out, uh, they're probably timed out in other uptight chats, but my chat's really not uptight. So, you know, I kind of allow people to be who, what, what they want to say. It's just, look at Toe Jam. He's complimenting you now, Grandma. You're hot. You're on fire, lady. Okay. So he is being nice. He just said you're hot. What? Okay, guys. You know, okay. it, men so, learn you know, to be careful complimenting women because uh, it's not always going to be taken well. 
well, it, it's just, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know everything that's gone on in the chat. So I'm only judging yes, by I what I glanced over and, and read a couple times. Uh, but I, grandma seems to be upset. Uh, sea org is saying, uh, I said kids these days are too dumb to play chess. That's all. Well, that's not true because my 11 year old is very good. Uh, I will get my friend on here right now. Uh, to tell you that. Hang on. Uh, so so Kof these... is saying just toe jam and, or get kicked off other channels or troublemakers. Give them the boot. What are you guys just going around wrecking havoc? <laughs> what are you guys this doing? Like... Yeah. Grandma, one more date. Give it one more shot. You're a hot grandma. Okay. Nance, you're a hot grandma. I'll be quiet. Burp. Uh, Gloria Dillon. Let's see. Let's see what Glory has to say here. I've been off chatting with an investigator reporter friend seeing if he has any idea through the work grapevine about the Brenner hearing. He's too young for me and married to boots. <laughs> I have no idea who you're talking about. Who is married and too young? The investigative reporter? <laughs> They're not troublemakers or jokers. My grandson's 14 years old and he plays chess. Thank you, Kiki. See? You guys. Kids are definitely not too dumb to play chess. They probably... Toji, do you even know how to play chess? Uh, thanks, Nance, because that's what that's what needs to happen. You guys, just uh, leave Grandma alone. Uh, keep keep going with whatever you guys are saying, but just leave Grandma out of it. She's not feeling it, so you gotta know when to just kind of leave people alone. Dave Crawley of the Cold Cod or Cold Podcast. Okay. All right. Anyway, so where were we at? <laughs> Shoot, where were we at? I don't know. Well, I think we were uh, talking about the institution of marriage. Oh, we were we were at marriage. I, I think I was trying to defend it, basically saying yeah. that you know marriage is great. Um, I don't oh think it's God. necessarily the cause of a lot of problems. But then again, a lot of people associate with it. It's like right when marriage happens, then things change. So that I, does I, seem to. I'm. I. I don't mean to cut you off. I really apologize, no. Robbie. 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 Hi, sir. Uh, Robbie is saying, I went from having a wrench in here and crime time with Jess being a friend to being completely hidden in a heartbeat. Careful, see organ toe jam and Nance. Okay, hold on a second, Robbie, because that is not exactly true, sir. Um, my phone number is at the bottom of that screen, so you feel free to give me a call. But you were out of line, even for me. And I, I am very level-headed usually, and you went way over that line. Uh, I, you, you, you were in rare form. I, I get that way as well. I would need to talk to you, you, you because you're, you're, yes, Allie is telling you, Rob, Robbie, uh, be honest about your side. You, you have to, Robbie. That you just can't, you can't just say that. You can't just say that. That, that's just not. That's not an accurate description because you, you went ballistic in here. Like these guys are in here joking around and just being, just being silly. Like I I've looked over and I've laughed a couple times and they're, they're just, they're just joking around. Uh, but you, you went off the rails and that's just, you're going to have to give me a call. We'll, we'll have to talk about it, but I'm just telling you what it is. So if you're going to be mad, be mad at me. Tamara, hey guys. Woo, finally got internet service. Yay, I'm so glad you're here, Tamara. Yes. Uh, Robbie, these are my friends, and they will tell you I'm perfect. Tell her I'm the perfect. Say, this is where you start tripping. Like, <laughs> Robbie, call in. Robbie, go ahead and call in. Call in. I'll let you call in. But if you start going off the rails, I too am in rare form tonight. So I'm just saying, just throwing that out there, throwing the hat into the ring. So let me go ahead and give you a link. If you want to come up, I'll let you come up. If you want to call in, the number's going across that screen. As for crush baby worm parts, <laughs> There's something so wrong with you people. 
Robbie's got some white ass chompers. Yeah, he does, but he's he uses those chompers like a maniac, Dance. You did not, he literally, Robbie, you went ballistic on grandma. Like all, she, like, okay, number one, you were flipping out about the LDS church, which I don't know, just that sentence in itself is funny to me, but that's a joke for another day. But you were flipping out about the LDS church and your boyfriend's response to it. And all grandma said was, I know some nice people from the LDS church. And that was enough for you to completely lose your shit. Uh, go into a rant of all rants, sir. And that's me putting it mildly. So, but you did do that. I'm on the couch with my boyfriend warning these two. Okay, well, tell them to be good. You were not good, so you know. White claws. <laughs> I guarantee you, Robbie, <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh so obnoxiously in your ear, but it, what wasn't he drinking White Claws that night? Robbie, were you drinking White Claws? Because I think you were. Like, if you're acting like that off White Claws, you can never, oh, you were so bad. You were so, you still owe grandma an apology. Like, that's how bad it was. You just, you completely went off the rails on her because she simply said, oh, well, I, like, I know some nice LDS people. And you were like, rah, and just attacked her. And we were like, what the hell, dude? Like, I had to mute you. Like, it was a whole thing. And and here you are, are all hopped up on White Claws. And you're like, oh, okay, it's cool now. See, we were talking about this earlier substances and alcohol are not an excuse for bad behavior. Grandma comes to JTT all the time and I don't bother. Well, you shouldn't bother anyway, but you're rude as shit. No, see work. That's bad advice. He does owe her an apology. <laughs> Nance, exactly. White girl wasted, Robbie. You were 100% white girl wasted. Girl. And then you even tried to yell at me and say, I'm not a girl. Okay, well, you talk like one. So, and you were being a complete bitch. Sorry, Thusu, but sometimes you just have to say it. Robbie, you were being a bitch. And you definitely owe grandma an apology. Burp on that. You were abused by the Mormons. I, I mean, I guess, but not every single, listen. I'm not religious. Thusu, you are religious, correct? Yes. You have religious yeah. ideals. Okay. So I'm not religious, but I still, if I'm not religious, that doesn't mean that I can look at you and say, uh, oh, you're Mormon? Well, I don't like you. You're Christian? I hate you. Uh, you're Catholic? I Get away from me. Like, that's just not what this is. I, I'm a big on live and let live. I am big on that. But I do believe that if you are going to enter into a relationship, a marriage, et cetera, et cetera, that you really need to have similar ideals to the person you're entering into a relationship because those things will come up later and become a problem, most likely. Just saying. To get back to the marriage topic. Thusu, I'm talking to you. Oh, <laughs> yes. Are you watching the chat with the ridiculousness? I have been, yeah. It's been kind of entertaining, not going to lie. Yeah, they're, they're, they're ridiculous. Uh, what's Grandma saying here? What did Grandma say? I take a lot of crap for doing my job as a mod, keeping it fair in here. Yeah, Grandma, it's okay. It's okay. Like, I, again, unless they're attacking you personally, you were being a bitch, Robbie, you were. But unless you're, they're attacking you, you know, personally or something, or just being outrageous. I mean, what I've seen is just them having a conversation back and forth and just being goofy, silly together. I don't, I, I don't really see what, what they're doing that's bad. Allie. Alley cats. Uh, what is your what is your take on this entire chat? Is was this too much? Was grandma being attacked? What was going on here? 
Al, I, I need your, your opinion here. Oh, see, there's Robbie with the, with a good apology. Actually, I like that apology. Uh, sorry I was a bitch to you, Grandma. I really enjoyed that. That's perfectly said. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do have to laugh at the chat. Thanks for complimenting your people, Robbie. I don't know why that's so funny to me. This is this not funny to you? <laughs> like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> you're like, no. I, I don't really. Uh, yeah, it's not really my thing. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. You're more of a you're more of a serious talker, but I like that about you. Though. Yeah, well, I'm a different. Yeah, I'm a different person. I guess it's good to have oh. some diversity, though. Uh, okay, so let me just. I'm sorry. Uh, so grandma, grandma is saying that, that Robbie C or toe jam, uh, were you guys sent by, um, Jim Terry to pick on her? Uh, because it looked like Nance was bringing them in grandma, but I, I'm asking you guys straight up. So just give a straight up answer. Do Sue is like grandma, you know, let's see. All right, so here's Allie's synopsis. Grandma asked them to stop, and they didn't. She's probably sensitive because of that Robbie experience, so is being a little triggered by seeing Cho Jam because of it. Okay, I, I, I would agree with that synopsis. Um, let's see. Okay, no. So, so you guys were not... Nance is saying... I brought them in, Jess. You like my humor. You like Santos' humor, too. Yeah, I do. Um, you have to understand, Robbie Robbie went off the rails. I already said that. Uh, he has apologized. Grandma, it's up to you. I'm not going to tell you whether to accept that, that apology or not. Like I was talking about forgiveness earlier, you don't have to forgive people if you don't want to. That's up to you. Um, but I don't think their behavior is anything crazy. So, if we can just go on. Yeah, no, I'm glad you guys are here. I, I'm, not, I'm not really seeing anything that you guys are doing. Um, Robbie, was, Robbie was literally off the rails, okay? Uh, what Alley Cat said here is just the crux of it. Uh, because Robbie acted that way, it, it's kind of triggered Grandma. She's not... She's unsure about like kind of what you guys are doing. Like you guys are being trolls or whatever. And if you are trolling a little bit, who cares? It's just not the end of the world. I, I'm not. She's just, I understand why she's acting the way she's acting. I, I, that's what I want to say because I love grandma and I, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. This who help me. <laughs> Help me. I'm kind of <laughs> lost as well. This is not my uh, my area of expertise. <laughs> I mean, it seems like it seems to me that there's just a lot of um, a lot of trolling going on, and so you know, if if people are trolling, they're just trying to get a reaction. So I guess this is what's feeding it. Um, and I, yeah, I don't really know where this is all coming from. I guess. The, uh, Nan was it Nancy who invited them just to have fun? So it acts as a derailment. So I think, you know, maybe Nancy needs to realize if she brings people in and this is what happens, you know, she got kind of has to understand, you know, what, why she brought these people in then, you know, if they just want to have, you know, jokes and stuff, but if it, go it carries too far, then that's up to them. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I suppose it's not. It's like what you said. It's not complicated, right? Just yeah, it's complicated. people complicate everything. Yeah, that's why I, I'm looking at the situation. I guess the way that I am, which is different from you, um, I'm just looking at it as it's not a big deal. Like they're just joking with each other, back and forth, being goofy, being silly. Um, are they on topic of what we're talking about? No. 
Um, but they're entertainment. They're, they, I'm, I'm glancing over, just kind of giggling to myself and, and still talking to you. So it isn't the end of the world, no. But uh, if it does trigger someone like uh, Grandma to, you know, it gets a reaction at people, you know, then it's no longer fun. You know what I mean? It's yeah, but then you, but you've got to ask yourself, well, why is this reaction happening? Is it is it is it is it just? Is what they're doing justifying the timeouts? In my opinion, no. Um, I just i I haven't seen everything because I have been talking to you. But what I have seen is is basically what they're saying. Just they were joking with one another. Um. I've done that. I, I've gone into people's chats, uh, not purposely, but I've gotten into conversations with people and stuff. And it wasn't anything uh, like I, I wasn't trying to be disrespectful to the creator. I was just, you know, I mean, we're, we're all just kind of hanging out like this, this live stream. Yeah, sure. I have a true crime channel uh, and that's not what this is tonight at all. So, you know, we're over here talking about marriage. They're over here just, you know, hanging out and, and, and just BSing with each other and, and making each other laugh. Um, so it's just, it's not, it's not a big deal. It's not uh, CR. What's the topic? We'll talk about it. Uh, I don't know. We, we got thrown off. We got thrown off. Marriage, I think was the topic. Uh, just I different, bet they got different into things, like a blended family, stuff like that. Uh, why I seem to be jaded towards marriage, <laughs> even though I feel like it's jaded may be a different word for for wise towards marriage. Um, or quite possibly that I just did not pick right. It could well, be. That. Yeah, that's a tough one to recognize. I mean, what does it mean to not pick right? It's like, I don't know. I, I feel like I did pick right. That's why I feel like not picking marriage is the right course. I just, from my experience, that seems to be the right course. Um, and then I look at you and I say you did everything right, but you've never been married. So you're so afraid of marriage that you haven't even entered that territory at all. You're like, no, that's like no man's land. I've well, been to no man's land, and I am telling you, it ex it's exactly what everybody tells you it is, no man's land. So I see the issue with being with a person, being in a committed relationship, loving one another, doing things together, sharing shared experiences, um, and then, but having your own things as well, having your own bank account. Um, not having sharing each other's last name, um, being your own person, like autonomy is a very big thing to me. And I, I feel like that goes for any, everyone. It, like it should, that's just my opinion. Oh, that's a, hard, that's a tough one. Autonomy within, within the context. I, I, what is tough marriage. about that? A person Be should have say over their own person over their own body like this is kind of all you have everything else you do in life you build or gather or collect or what buy whatever uh but your body that is yours to That's do as you see fit uh i just don't see who anyone else is to tell anyone else what they should do with that so it's, it's isn't simple it well, isn't it funny how when you hear marriage described, I guess in the more traditional sense, it's referred to as a union of two becoming one. This idea of no longer just being yourself, but now you are essentially tied to the hip, right? You are one in, or union with, in union with another person. So the idea of autonomy can can run in contrast or contradiction to that depending on how you define autonomy because to a certain extent are you truly autonomous when it comes to like your children like certainly you make decisions on what on your body based on what they say or do and in reaction to them right um so 
how it's tough to say oh this i have autonomy over everything i do and you have autonomy over what you do it just seems like marriage inevitably leads to requiring some mutual decision making that will impact both and so uh, in a way autonomy does get somewhat muddled or lost I don't know. That's that's quite the, the way you just made it it's sound. Very philosophical. It, so no, I no. I, I feel like you just not. made it extremely nuanced, and it's not something I've ever seen as nuanced. It's well. Yeah, so you, you is, just have a way of, of of again. It, this is why I enjoy our conversations because. Uh, you alley cats have, have that effect on me where you make me see a different way sometimes. And it's enjoyable because then I get to explore that. And, you know, but anyway, go ahead. Well, if you look at, okay, so here's what's always confusing to me. Maybe you can sort of shine some light on this. On one hand, you say, you know, marriage um, is, you know, something to avoid, like, uh, let's hold off on it. But then my question is, what are you doing in the meantime? Like, when you're in a relationship with someone, right, long term, that you haven't yet officially and formally defined as uh, marriage, right, signed the documents and such, what exactly are you living in? Is it what? Well, I would counter that with being in a committed relationship with someone. I mean, you are living together. You are functioning as a unit. Um, the rest of the world doesn't see you with other people. They, they see you with that person. They know that that is the person you are committed to and with. Um, you know, it, everything but the title. Uh, and it's, it's just, it, it's, it is just the title, and then it's it's so much more than that. So what is the more? That's what I want to know. The because more I hear this a lot. is being so entwined with a person that you lose autonomy. You, Fear. you lose part of yourself. You gain something, uh, for sure. You do. Uh, a partnership is a gain if it's a good one. It's a gain. Um, but you, you do lose part of yourself. And so that's why I just, my lived experience is to keep money separate, but work together with it. Um, and to also keep yourself as yourself. Uh, you both remain individuals that choose a life together. Um, just my lived experience has brought me to this mindset. If it's wrong, it's wrong. I don't know uh, because there's just no book for this. Um, so that's just how I see it. And I feel like that's the right course of action. Um, not being married to my ex of 10 years has saved me from having to go through a divorce uh, go through all of this paperwork, all of these things, paying a lawyer, doing, there's none of that. There is a breakup, a separation, an ending, and that's what happens. Um, and, and I'm free to move on with my life, whatever that is going to be. And gotcha. I'm driving this car, so without a map because I, I'm not sure where it goes. I'm kind of just driving along. Like, okay, I'm okay. Uh, you know, just trying to keep things, car driving straight down the road, everything's okay. Uh, but thinking about like turning off into like this dating world, I'm like, oh, I see that sign. I don't think that's a good idea. And I keep on driving, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. So is it something that's going through my head? Yes. Uh, people have asked. So I'm like, uh, no, but I, like, I don't know if, if something that I felt was worthwhile happens, then, then maybe I would 
look at it and just determine something. But other than that, I don't know. Like just going out there and being like, hey guys, <laughs> I'm single now and I want to date everybody and I want to try this and this. That's that's just so not me. Um, I just can't, that's just not, I just can't do that. That 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 would feel very foreign to me. So yeah, I, well, I, I live with a lot of fear it. and you do. I think you yeah. live with even more fear than I do, which is admirable. <laughs> well, I, I think it's more than just simply fear. I think it's prudence. You know, when you, when you think about what most of us do that we consider to be uh, smart, safe, whatever, it usually has to do with some reasonable amount of fear. The question is, is my fear reasonable? You know what I mean? Is there... Is there an overreaction to this fear or is it has it become dysfunctional? I mean, maybe for me in a way, I mean, if I'm not uh, married with kids by my age, maybe that's not <laughs> properly functioning, but then who is, you know, who's right. functioning? Yeah. Well, that, that just kind of goes back to the question, like what is normal? Like it does nor is yeah. normal even a word like, because it, it, it again, it, this is a saying but it's also been my lived experience it's just that um the only normal people that you ever know are the people that you don't know very well it's like you That's get to know someone really well and yeah. see how unnormal they are you know well maybe if you consider normal just to be um basic well or, or just expectations and that we don't always meet expectations like social expectations um community expectations familial expectations um because we fall we falter all the time you know so it's like in a way normal in my opinion is failing right but how do you how do you correct those failings it's like you know you like if, if you're someone with an addiction like we mentioned how do you correct that failing right um is it normal to be addicted is it normal to have some sort of i i would say not uh, emphatically i i would say not <laughs> it is not normal to be addicted i that's just you know i feel like that was a given one but go ahead no it's just that but when you think about it, if okay sure maybe not a, that addiction or addiction in general. Maybe that's not normal or common. Uh, although I'm sure it happens enough where people deal with it. I, mean, I heard people in chat even mention it. Oh, someone was alcoholic or drug addict or something. So it, it happens enough, right? Sort of, it's noticeable. I think so Robbie's an alcoholic. I'm not sure, but I think Robbie's a white claw alcoholic. <laughs> so he just strikes me as that kind of guy. I don't know why. Like, it's got I the impression. <laughs> I've seen so many people um, in real life who will use alcohol as an escape, and it's so commonly practiced. <laughs> Look, I love I love how the whole chat just stops. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, That's am I laughing at myself? Yes, I am, because I'm the only thing I have in this world through Zoom. <laughs> okay. no, but anyway, hey, me too. Right. Yeah. Listen, I'm a, you have, but you have children at least. Well, yes. You know? I, I just mean like as a person, like, well, when like, I get old and I, you know, sometimes. when I get old, I'm going to die alone, which means I have to prepare for the likelihood of like elderly abuse. I have to get, have enough money to be able to have a, um, you know, time and pay for care. So there's a lot of things I have to preemptively be prepared for when you don't have a family and your friends start dying off age and family dies off, you know? A lot of things people don't realize when you live single. I know I'm listening, but I think you are very diligent in planning. But then I like my critique and you can critique me too, just so you know, I like, I won't go sure. jump off a bridge, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people, will, but I'm not going to go jump off a bridge. But I, I think that you um, don't try things that maybe you should because 
even when it's bad, it does teach you something. Like, I really wouldn't understand relationships the way that I do now if there was not good and bad. Um, yeah, so I think your fear of just trying it, period, fear of failure is going to hold you back. Um, from just learning things. And again, some of those things are going to be awesome. And some of those things are kind of hard. Um, and it just, it just kind of teaches you more about people and yourself and just all of those things. Yeah. So, well, let me ask you something as yeah. someone who has not uh, been in a lot of relationships as someone who has not, uh, married and, uh, who's inexperienced, then do I speak though with any, any insight whatsoever, or do I speak from pure sort of ignorance, naivety? When, when I speak about relationships and marriage, what does it sound well, like? Well, I think you are speaking from perception, which that goes into one of my favorite quotes ever that perception is reality but perception is not always the truth. Um, so you're speaking from perceptions of watching others um, and watching how those relationships played out and the ups, the downs, the downfall, ultimate downfall. Um, when you live it, you will have obviously just a different perspective because it's it's not just something you're watching, you, you are actually living it. Um, do I think that makes you any less qualified i don't know you're like circumstantial evidence and i'm like direct <laughs> evidence if we're gonna tie this back to true crime it would be that way well it's anecdotal though remember yeah <laughs> and anecdotal <laughs> you know anecdotal experiences can have a um can color our perception in such a way where we start to generalize outside the scope of our experience uh i guess what i mean is if we use our minimal experiences at, to generalize a greater number of people or a greater group, then we're not really taking a, a logical or scientific approach. So I'm saying we're still going from perception that, of, as you mentioned, our reality and not truth, even from just anecdotal experience. I still what I'm say saying is, is that you should leap. Like, I don't know on what. I don't know on what. But I just, I would just like to see you have that experience because I don't necessarily think it's going to be completely horrible, terrible for you. Because I do yeah. think that you have a, enough awareness um, to sort of pick uh, the woman that would fit you best. Um, so, so even if there was a breakup, you have to remember, not every breakup is some Johnny Depp, Amber Heard thing. <laughs> you know, I I am actually very civil um, and, and sometimes friendly uh, with my exes. Like, I, I don't hate them. They don't hate me. Uh, so, yeah, I, not every breakup is this this, you know, atomic bomb. Um, but it could be a death from a thousand cuts, meaning even if it's just Well, small, that's why yeah. I, I worry about you because I feel like you <laughs> want things to be perfect because I yeah, feel like you, you, feel, you feel like you've analyzed enough, which I think you have overanalyzed. Uh, but I think you've analyzed enough where you're like, you know, when I do pick, if I do pick, it's going to be the right thing. And then if it's not, that's why I always caution you that there are going to be bumps in that road. No matter how perfect the road, there's going yeah. to be bumps. Uh, you don't just jump all out of the coach. You don't just jump out of the, the horse and buggy. Uh, you, you go over the bumps uh, and you'll be okay. You know, there's people. Well, I hope you're okay, yeah. I mean, look well, at the person you put in chat mentioned about um, what did she say? Most of my relationships have caused a lot of trauma and PTSD. Um, that's a tough thing to get over, you know? Yeah. 
And I uh, also said, so it's kind of hard for me to be optimistic to keep myself safe. I would rather stay away from people. <laughs> um, and I totally understand Lily. Like I didn't even read that all the way out, but I get that. Like, I just get that. That's, that's kind of how I feel. <laughs> like I would just rather stay away from people. But then there's something about me that I don't I don't like to necessarily stay all the way away from people. Well, we're social creatures, you know. Yeah. And at least for myself, even though I've become comfortable being alone, you still feel that part of you missing. You know, you, you always feel incomplete. But again, over time, I worry that my perception, which is kind of what I think a lot of you touched on, which is has become Fixed. Yeah, it's it, the word I have expectation on perfection. You're right. Too idealized, too theoretical. You know, mm -hmm. you're right. You, you do have to go through it, experience it. Fixed. Now it's so late in the game, you know, to go out. Just statistically it's speaking, not, the number though. of people. It's you have really to go not. We go over this every time, and it's not. It, it really might be the perfect time because at Maybe. this stage in the quote unquote games because life is kind of like the freaking hunger Games sometimes. Oh, it is definitely a game. It, so it so is it, in so many aspects. I think that's why I love that, that series so much because you can just see it like in the work field, uh, in relationship ways, like you can just apply it in different ways to that. But anyway, I, it's, you've gotten to a stage in it where you understand a lot even though you haven't experienced yet you understand a lot it's a textbook understanding like uh, ali says it's, it uh, is theory versus definitely practice. did you say that yeah al's yeah, really theory good versus practice. Practice. ali needs to get in here she's very smart yes she does al come on come on up we all love you what did she say theory and practice are so different even in science uh absolutely that's why I I, mm -hmm. I want, like, I don't want to be over here like, Dushu, you better do this. <laughs> but I, like, my inner self is saying that. But the part yeah. of me that's trying to have tact is like, Dushu, I think you should think about it and have some experience. You know, yeah. um, I, I think you should. Like, I do I think it's going to be completely detrimental and rip your entire life apart? No. Um, could it you hurt? Know. Sure. Could it be yeah, the greatest know. fucking thing you ever did? Yes. It's kind of like a gamble. But, that's but the, that's I feel like fear. you gave yourself, hold on. I feel like you gave yourself enough time to textbook understand. Um, and then thus a leg up on what you're looking for, et cetera, et cetera. All right, go ahead. Sorry. No, I am just thinking about how you mentioned it might be really great, really intense. But that's also, again, the overthinker in me, that's also the uh, cause of worry. And then it's like, well, that just means I'll be at a higher uh, elevation to then fall from should things come crashing down. Because, you know. Overthinking. Yeah. Objection. Totally. Objection. Overthinking sustained um <laughs> we're gonna treat this like a courtroom <laughs> um, that is such an objection and as you just heard the judge sustained it so yeah nope not an argument <laughs> yeah it, but yeah it, it just boils down to be you have to be i have to be prepared to suffer basically in love and that is tough because i have a tendency to very you maybe you can't tell this just what speaking, but I tend to I think I think I tend to be very emotional. Not emotional like in, you know, bipolar, like a lot of times people think of emotional, right? Or overly expressive in that sense. But emotional as in having um Do you think we're boring these people to tears? Who cares? This is a great conversation. <laughs> I think so as well, but do you just want to just call me and we not bore these people to tears? Um, this, this conversation, or do you think this uh, this is a, an important conversation for just anyone to listen to? I think honestly, anyone can relate to this. 
can hear it. It's always nice to have something out in the open that people can hear. But you know what? This is why it's so great to hear other perspectives. Even if you disagree, it's just, it's nice to know that such other things exist. Other perceptions exist. Other experiences exist because it takes us out of ourselves, but it also gives some validation. If we hear something that we can relate to, it's like, oh, I, I'm like that. You know, I, I've experienced that. I'm not alone in that, right? I don't know. It just it provides some yeah. depth and diversity to our world. Yes. And I don't think that's a bad thing at all. That's why, uh, like me and Al, Allie, uh, I wish she would come up here, Allie. Um, and I did I think she is. Like, I hope she is. She, she had to get a bread for Okay. Because let me send the link again so she has it. But I, um, yeah, we, we were talking about that. And it's just, I, we agree not to, like, gang up on you or something crazy. But just that, you know, um, you having a, a lived experience wouldn't be the worst thing for you. You know, it, it would yeah. be something I mean, that would enrich you, uh, teach you. Um, more, uh, and then you sort of get better at finding what you want. And that's why, like, I'll be very honest here. This is going to get real super cringy, but right. in the past, I would have absolutely gone for someone like you. But, and not to say there's anything wrong with you. I, I'm not saying that. But knowing what I know now, no. No. <laughs> because yeah, the, the ideals are so different, the outlook is so different, and I don't hate your outlook, and I don't, I don't know that you hate mine. I, it doesn't feel like no, that. I don't. You don't say that, so I, I don't think you do, right? Uh, so, but, but it's just identifying that, and you know, not going into something that you shouldn't. Uh, and, it, whereas in the past, I, I did that and I had to learn from those kinds of things. You're, but you're right. It, it, it is. Um, but, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because it's so true. There are times I feel like I like I wouldn't mind compromise or just, you know, maybe taking a chance. Right. With so and so or some, you know individual but i need to remember that i have to look ahead like is i have to use some again prudence like wait hold on there are certain things where we disagree on that's going to cause issues in the future so yeah it feels good now yeah there are certain things that we um are compatible with especially just you know on a physical level but you know what yeah you're thinking long long term term exactly where is this going to go and I don't, I'm not the kind of person that wants to just play. Some people do. They just want to have fun and then they move on. You know, they don't think care about long term. But I don't want to waste someone's time. I don't want to get in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I feel like ten years, years was falling for me. I'm a little pissed off about that. Uh, you know, but yeah. Anyway. But maybe time was in that situation though. Was time even relevant? Had those triggers occurred previous I mean, uh, years prior? Yes, I I'm going to say time was relevant. Uh, I could have spent that with someone that didn't do what that person did and and, and well, called what, what they did. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna say my time is is at the time is extremely well, I, relevant. It's a well, just, it, it's so crazy because it, it's a made up concept. Time is a made up concept. Time actually does not exist. Uh, but it's also relevant in the grand scheme of my life. So there's that. Well, I, I just meant, did time have any um, impact on deterring or not deterring, uh, you know, eventual issue with like addiction? Um, Hi, Tony. Go ahead. But yeah, I see what you mean. In regards to you losing time, yeah, you're right. That you could, you, well, but here's the thing though. All right. If we're both near the same age, right, but we have different histories. Wouldn't you say that at the very least you have, okay, maybe not in the dating scene, it could be seen as advantageous, but from your own personal life, like 
not to put you on a spot, but at least having those children gave you, you know, a, um, an, an enrichment, right? Where I don't have that. You know what I mean? It gives you something that I don't have and perhaps miss. Uh, can we just agree? I'm sorry. I, I am not trying to disregard what you're saying, but can we just agree that time is a made up concept? Did you agree with that statement? Um, shoot, I don't know. Wait, time is a made up cons construct? Con like a con concept? Concept. All right, all right, construct, yes. It is. Yeah, because I think of, you know, like social construct. Yeah, who, who made up time? Humans. Uh, we started creating calendars and, and, and watching the sun, and we decided what a day was and what time was. And mm -hmm. yeah, no, humans do that. That's why we're like, oh, uh, I think we're going to get rid of the daylight savings times now. Like, that's just something that humans literally made up. Daylight savings time is the most idiotic thing. It, it makes zero sense. <laughs> it makes no sense at all. Uh, you know, they didn't grace us with that this year, hopefully next year. But no, time, uh, Sea Org, is, is absolutely a made up concept. In essence, it does not truly exist. Well, here's the you thing. I have though. to think a little deep on that, but it's there. No, here's the thing, though. I, I okay, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna make a counter argument. Time, <laughs> as, the measurement <laughs> measurement of time, yes, is subjective. For example, you know yes, how we measure yeah. weight, for example, which is force, could be in newtons. Like in physics, they typically use. Uh, a unit of measurement called Newtons for uh, force or uh, weight. Uh, it might be pounds, it might be kilograms, etc. right? So the, the measurement of something, yes, may be subjective, but the fact that it exists would not be. I would say time is proven, well, number of ways I suppose you could prove time, but one of them, I think, would be death. And I suppose if you get really down to it, it's you know, cellular death, right? But the fact that that we age is a testament to time. Okay. All right. Good point. But either way, the way it's constructed is made up. Like humans made up that there's 24 hours, that there's seven hours, this eight hours, this da, 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 da. humans made all that up. Like you, you think about time just on a very simple playing field hmm. it, it 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 doesn't exist you know it's interesting there's um man i haven't delved back into my college days but i remember taking courses in um like linguistics and such and certain there's does a, there's the body certain age yes but time as it stands is made up by humans it, it's not a science per se it's just not that's well, what the, the terms we use for time the question yeah, is, this is do why they i feel like people reality. like you and i get complexes over here you know you're like oh my god i'm running out of time like no you're not like what's wrong with you do you have health issues i don't think so how about uh, milestones you here you have things going on you're knowledgeable what, what are you talking about the time is now or, or future or whatever uh, but no, you're not running out of time. Uh, time is like a fear monger. I just figured something out. I feel like I'm on <laughs> shrooms and I, I've never even done them. But I feel like I am. Because I feel like I'm having a revelation here. Let's hear that, it. Yeah, this is complete bullshit. Like time is a fear monger. I, I feel like I'm trolling but, everyone now. <laughs> but here's, oh, but here's the thing. Though, here's the you thing. People. Sorry. No, but here's yeah. the thing. You, milestones occur with time so for example and this is all throughout human history from an anthropological perspective you have certain uh, milestones right where it's watches are man-made sea or sorry <laughs> that's right um so okay so when we talk about milestones they're usually measured by time or stages of development for example like uh, stages of coming development of age or, are different for everyone though Sure, but they still are regulated by time. So 
a, a woman, for example, has a certain amount of time for a biological clock, ready right, to be able to have children. Thank that God. is inevitable. I but am so science with that stage in life. I'm sorry, I just had an announcement. That's how excited I am about that. Um, that's uh, whenever these eggs would like to stop coming, I'm ready. Oh. <laughs> I am so ready for that. And I just feel like I, I, I'm, I'm being tortured every month for no apparent reason. Like, you know, there's no reason for this. But you know, okay, here's the problem with time when it comes to dating. For me, and I think maybe we touched on this before, at, at my age, right? If I'm going to have that expectation I mentioned about having family, et cetera, I have to then change the range of my age and which I'm going to be in a relationship with. And that definitely, that time, right, that definitely has an impact on people's um, development, their maturity, et cetera. So, uh, generally speaking, of course, you know, it's not like every person of every age acts the same way, but in general, it starts to change the sort of demographic. Um, there. And so, yeah, for me, that's not where I'm at. Like, I'm not done with my, you know, sperms, <laughs> conversely. You're I'm not done, with, done sperm. with your sperms. Yeah. That I'm is done with so them. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just name this stream that I'm not done with my <laughs> sperms? Ali, what do you have to say about that? Thusu is not done with his sperms. I mean, it's real. It's real, real. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably it's so true. real. <laughs> So are you saying that you're not done with your egg eggs? I I I mean nature is still giving me egg eggs, but um you know <laughs> I'm getting up there, so it's getting I well, imagine time time fear mongering again. Well Look at yeah. It so Ali, you must feel the pressure of time in that regards, right? If so you... the, it's so weird. I never did my whole life. It was never a, a priority. I I could have, and then all of a sudden, you like when COVID hit, and I was like, "Oh shoot, oh, <laughs> I probably yeah. should have now figured that That's part out." I just never I mean. made that a priority, and maybe now my body's telling me, "Hey, did you want to do this?" <laughs> and I was like, "Oh shoot, dang it! I should have thought and about the that answer probably is before yes. now." Yes, Allie, well, you would make the a right fantastic person. mother. I don't know why I know that, but you just would make a great mother i don't know. I just I, I instinctively know this about you i'm a good auntie that's for sure and I but i still haven't figured out if thusu is the greatest man alive or a serial <laughs> killer and i want yeah, you to so weigh in let's figure that out <laughs> <laughs> okay so now how do we truly determine good. this <laughs> chat chat what's well, your advice how do you determine between these things is Thusu the most perfect man or a straight up serial killer? We need you guys to weigh in here. <laughs> he's, yeah, but you know, he's of a certain age and he hasn't been married. No, wait. Kids, I love that Thusu is right? ready to state his case. Go, okay, Alex. Let's hear it. <laughs> well, <laughs> yikes. I, okay. Here's the thing there's, you know, okay. I, I think that what a lot of times, okay, you know what, hold on, maybe I should hold my tongue, because what I'm going to say, it might be different for women at different ages. I think maybe women um, have different expectations or what they consider to be perfect, right, or what they look for in a guy. Uh, I think that those criteria change over time. So maybe for my age group, because um, I've can always- Can put got, this to bed? Do, do you own a telescope? Do I, <laughs> You do. No, no, not anymore. Oh my no, gosh, no, you no, hesitated. No. <laughs> Damn it! Don't uh, make no. me or bright. Dusu, you hesitated. It was only Come for comedic him. effect. Remember, I said I can't say jokes or one-liners, but I can timing. add some comedy once in a while. Timing, some comedic yeah. timing, yeah. Uh -huh. Exactly. Let's see. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> Some people have made up their minds. <laughs> I'm so sorry. 
I am being ridiculous right now, but I do like to have fun sometimes, you guys. Yeah, I just, I'll say, I don't feel like a perfect match, so to speak, or I don't feel like I am the perfect, like a good candidate in terms of dating, oftentimes. Um, just well, because... I just want to acknowledge these two Toe Jam and Sea Org, who have, have fucked off this entire stream, <laughs> are now claiming they have caught a serial killer. So we acknowledge you guys uh, for that. But I'm not sold that Thusu is an actual Sierra Keller. Allie, what say you, please, ma'am? Yes well, or no? I, I think we need a little more. I mean, you and I have heard Info. him for a couple streams. And if the people yeah. here mostly have not, we need to well, I, I, I lay some, I lay look some groundwork out. Because they're just jumping to whatever's funniest as the conclusion. Which, give it to them, it's funny. Um, but uh, maybe we should lay out some parameters of like, like I was trying to do the true crime thing and you did today too, Jess, of like, you were, you know, making some analogies to true crime. And for me, it was the last time when I was saying <coughs> he is, his goal in life was to get married. And, and if he, if that is, if we call that, say that would be the crime in the like addicts, Alex Murdaugh trial and and in crime in general, you know, in order to commit the crime, they need to have motive, means, and opportunity. It's those three things. So say if marriage is the crime or, be, you know, that is his goal, that is his happiness. And a lot of serial killers, their goal is to commit this crime or, you know, whatever. So if we made that illusion, we could say, what is his, does he have motive to do this? Does he have the means to do this? Those, the means, it sounds like now he's set up himself for a good life. He, he's got the means. He's able to do this. Does he have the motive to do this? He says he does, but you know, you have to like have it, the world crashing down on you for Alex Murdaugh, you know, to kind of make this decision to commit this crime maybe. So that gave him a motive. We got to hear more about motive, I think. And maybe then motive has have, to be. Yeah. But I was going to say, like, with that analogy, maybe there needs to be a woman um, instigating it to act True. as the catalyst. Something outside of you could motivate you potentially True. to do this, which means you have to give yourself the opportunity to meet these said women, yeah. right? To feel oh, this man, that's tough. To feel compelled to want to do this. <laughs> but no, but that's, uh, where, where, do, where do we meet these people? Uh, just if I, if I choose to, to dip my pinky toe into the swamp, swamping the dating pool, uh, where yeah. do I do this? Where, where am I doing? Am I doing this at the grocery store? The I, single people don't doing? ask us. Why would you ask us? We're, we're the ones <laughs> because perpetually you guys are single. Both single. <laughs> and perpetually. So we're not the ones meeting people, <laughs> it sounds like. Well, yeah. Yeah. for me, it's it. different though, because... I need a new panel. Can somebody get up here and tell me where we are meeting these people? I, I just want to know. Like, I, I'm serious well, about that. We are meeting each other right here, right now. Well, sure. yeah. I, I was going to point that out as well, Al. Thank you for saying that. Okay, go ahead. I just well, have to throw my hat in the ring sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, I, I always felt like the most difficult aspect of meeting a, a woman in terms of, you know, as I date has is finding an appropriate environment in which to do so. And that I came to realize, um, it, it has sort of, um, hindered me because I, yeah. again, I'm an overthinker, but also I tend to see the maybe, objective um inappropriateness of situations where like okay so for example meeting someone at a uh, church or at work or out i don't know grocery shopping like all those are inappropriate like you don't, you should not be hitting why on because that's inappropriate people, to meet in a grocery store that i feel yes. like that's organic because pe yeah. okay if a woman's out there let's okay let's say i'm grocery shopping i meet a woman or something Okay, if you're be being obnoxious and, and following somebody through aisles, and yeah, I would say red flag, get away from me. But if I am over there looking at produce and someone else is doing the same, 
and we strike up a conversation about something. Um, I, I, I would rather do that than meet someone at a bar or, you know. But the thing is, okay. I, I don't know that uh, woman's situation. I have to be very presumptive. And women oftentimes don't want to be hit on. You know, they get it, I deal with it enough. I don't want to just be another person that, you know, they have to deal with. Um, it'd be, it just feels like a burden on someone else to intrude, right? And what about other places? You're being kind of limiting. You're saying church, grocery store, so you, you know, sidewalk. So do like a, but like, <laughs> okay, so like a dating app. Okay. So a, a, a dating app uh, website. Or analogy. Even okay. those are f like, <laughs> what are those? Just algorithms that put you in with people who oftentimes just want well, to there's get. There's also things sorry. in between those extremes is kind of what I'm saying. There are places that you might just meet someone of when you're doing things you're already interested in right like say Ugh. you like learning about xyz you go to a class about it you, or you like um a social club but, or a you like going to games mm. of some sort or you know but see i wouldn't are, to me i but it's funny because okay. just like with the grocery shopping those environments feel inappropriate to try to instigate a relationship you know what I mean? It Over feels time, so under... though, you might learn it's not. Like, you just hit it off with someone. Ran like, mm -hmm. going over to them on a random grocery trip. You know what I mean? But it's like you socialize with them once a week for a year, and it kind of just, then you kind of know their situation. They know yours. And you know it's not inappropriate at that point, right? I don't know. It, I, well, have you I've been in that stories, situation? Uh, no, I've no. Okay, I mean, here's the thing. In my again, naivety, I've obviously been in situations where I've talked with women in areas outside, you know, but never have I taken or at least tried to make the impression that I was, uh, you know, trying to date or get to know them or anything like that. I will say, however, when I was younger, I noticed, well, I was okay, so what I did. I was in a situation because a lot of my work, what I did, tended to attract women. So I tended to, that may have colored my perception of how I spoke to women in terms of like, because at that time when I was younger, I was trying not to get in a relationship because I still had to get my ducks right. in a row, so to speak. That's so, the way I feel. Yeah. And so in my attempt to avoid those temptations, which was very tempting for me, but I, you know, try getting back in there, like to re at it's, it feels like the situation is no longer appropriate. Like when I was younger, it felt more appropriate. You know what I mean? Like when I was younger, it felt like a little There's more natural. time. There's yeah, time being a bully true. again. But, but it I mean, I, I feel like this is just something I, I, I half joking, yeah. but I really do feel like it's something that we have to be conscious of and not let it sort of beat us up. Oh, we're on this clock. We're ticking, 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 ticking. Uh, stop with the pressure. You know, you, you but, know who you I are. Am. You know what you want. <laughs> you you know what's out there. You, you, you know what, you know, you, you have a very good idea, again, of what path you would like to take. So uh, just the overthinking, I think, needs to stop. And the pursuing something and letting it be what you think it's going to be needs to happen. And you know if it does not end that way, which who's to say it will or won't, but if it doesn't, don't take it as so detrimental that it's the end of life. Because I can right. assure you from lived experience, it is not. Right. I will say, okay, I'm going to say something that you're probably going to think is absolutely crazy. So I'm just preparing for it. Um, I have a tough time believing. I'm not even believing, but just accepting as reality that people can love in the same way they, how do I say this? It's hard for me to believe that women can love 
as they get older um, in the really? same way as they did when they were wow. younger. Wow. Now, in the same way, what I mean is I if I feel like women, as they get older, and you're my age group, their idea of love is more guarded, is a little more safe, and is less vulnerable. Well, and I, it's yes, less of the mutual. Uh, less vulnerable, for sure. I will absolutely agree with that because there is wisdom that has been gained. Um, same for you. Like I said, you're circumstantial evidence and I'm direct evidence. Uh, so you combine those things, but you know, your circumstantial evidence doesn't make it less. You have viewed, you have watched, you've observed, you've analyzed, you've seen the ending of things. I've lived it. Um, so yes, you absolutely, you learn from those things. Um, don't take them as such a bitterness. Uh, there can be bitterness there. And I will admit just because I think that the, the breakup is so new for me that there remains a bitterness. And over time, I hope it goes away, but, and I think it will, but it just, but, you know, go ahead. I feel left over. I feel sometimes like if I were to be dating someone who has been through a lot that <clears throat> I, I love science that. hold on i love sure. scientifics i love him uh who is saying this ef hutton grayson scientific skeptic is smarter i love that guy i, I really I love that not too. many i just put in chat not many are smarter than him i've been watching him since i the love he started that. on here but he's not yeah. for everyone he's, <laughs> no he's not but that's a smart guy and totally. he sees what's going on and he just lays it out. Like totally. it just is what it is. And and he lays it out in a methodical, um, smart manner. Uh, he throws a little humor in there. Uh, he but has it's intelligence. Very negative. Yes. It's very negative. I mean, it's very, also... it's very negative. Uh, you know what, Al, I'm glad you said that because it, that is true. It is very negative, but he does have brilliant points that totally. I'm not going to even try to object to because they're right. I agree. And I've talked to yeah. him offline. He and I have talked about things because I have uh, somebody, you. Yeah, because somebody put us in touch because they were like, you're smart and you want to help him do this. But I, I, what I've always said to him is the unfortunate thing is you're just going to get in this negative spiral downwards unless you tell us how to fix it. You know, you know or I, how I, do we I move forward? I totally agree with you. Like, I, I'm so glad you're saying this because that would be my single critique is That's it, that when it's yeah. constantly negative, it's constantly calling out other people. Sometimes you got to mix that up. That's why we're having this stream now. We've had serious, well, a lot of serious moments, but, you know, some laughing moments and stuff like that. But it's just you got to mix it up a little bit. Um, but I do see his points. I, I, I don't do want the negativity I, to negate that, but right. it, the, the negativity is there and it has to be broken up with something. Right. So you, so you probably smart, gave him more advice. Yeah. And if he's so smart, you know, in a way I said this very, like in a long conversation about a whole bunch of things, but if he's Hi, so Brenda. smart and he knows all the solutions, well then show us or teach us, you know, you can't just rip everything down all the time you it's easy to be the guy throwing the tomatoes but it's hard to be in the ring you know so show us better show us the <laughs> other way well and i think you and i agree with this we've talked about it before critical thinking yeah critical exactly. thinking is the way uh yeah. whether people want to hear that on a saturday night or not sorry right. for killing your vibe but Critical thinking is the way, which I think that Thusu does to an extreme right. because I think <laughs> he's, he's absolutely a critical thinker um, and an intense thinker, but it, it, it comes, it comes to a point where it's, it's dysfunctional. Over. It's too much. Yes. It's a downer. It's de debilitating. You, know? you, yeah. you want to have fun and be goofy too, right? You want to be able to make mistakes and let it be okay. You know, not be perfect all the time because you can overthink yes. like I have done a lot of my life, you know, like and yeah. now it's like I feel in a lot of ways the same as Thusu where it's like 
did did I miss that point in my life where I was just young and dumb and attractive and you know all the things but I put up walls because it wasn't I didn't prioritize that side of my myself my life but yeah are you in a different place though Ali than me in terms of because as a woman I assume there's more of an expectation that you uh receive uh some you know or you're re receiving uh, the man or men as suitors right instead of the opposite so from your perspective do you have to change your outlook if if you want to be in relationships you have to be the instigator to pursue well, now men? i things are different in my life now too like then i was way more vulnerable out in the open it was pre this corona thing and you know all that i mean i had all the things i was in a very like public facing job where you know i could interact with all sorts of people all the time and i would get you know i i had choice <laughs> it wasn't hard yeah. it you know and now i'm more reclusive to say you know i don't know it's just things just changed in my life to where i don't live now in the middle of Denver, where I used to live. I live a little bit on the outskirts. I'm not in the role that I was before. I'm working for myself from home a lot, you know, and there's just yeah. a lot of things that have changed. So I'm not, I, I feel like I get what you're saying about. So is the grocery store the only place or, you know, <laughs> I don't, yeah. because a lot of those things that I used to do that where I had myself out there and I used to get, you know, feedback very regularly, good or bad. Um, about myself, you know, Wait, you, what do you mean you'd get feedback? Forgive me, like, Brian. you know, suitors or not, you know, you could tell with somebody was trying or not. I used to be, you know, See? I knew women easy. could tell. <laughs> well, it used to be easier when you were out more, you know, it just was. Yeah. And things have just changed in the world. And then in the time of my life, it like all went together. You know, <laughs> it was just weird how it all mm. kind of worked. And um, worked, whether in my favor or not, I'm like, so happy right now because i've got a house i'm a little bit on the outsides of denver i have like a walking trail by me i've got families by me i'm making a garden i'm like in this nesting phase in a way yeah. and then it's like oh shoot this kind of would be fun with somebody i guess you know and i probably should have done that sure. whether i want a kid or not um almost it to, to me it's always been i need to find the right person first but if i wanted to have a kid i never dreamed of having a kid you know what i mean it was just like if i found that right person then we would have a good ch chemistry and we would discuss how we might raise a child together and we'd be very thoughtful and strategic about it and i love that mm -hmm. idea with someone i just in my younger years didn't happen to come across that person or maybe i wasn't even giving that a chance you weren't even or, probably I, thinking you know? about that yeah right. i think that's maybe where we differ because like i i look at relationships as the soul uh, as merely a step to marriage and children, right? So I think backwards, I think, okay, with the intent of having children and marriage, this, then I will use dating for that end, to, for, uh, as a means to that end. But it sounds like for you, forgive me if, uh, if, if I misunderstand, but it sounds like it was more like, okay, well, I'm just going to engage in dating for what it is. And then if something should come up, for marriage or children, then we'll see. But you you in, seem to enjoy the dating aspect of it. I didn't, I itself. barely dated actually, <laughs> you know? Oh, okay. I, I was really almost overly concerned with my career and setting myself up for now, you know? Like kind of like you in a way. Like yeah. I didn't really think through the whole, um, I might want kids one day or, you know, whatever. Cause to, well, and I guess I just did prioritize the relationship over the kids. Like Jess mm -hmm. was saying earlier to me, it has to be that partner it has to be number one. But you, but would you still be, would you still date someone who you didn't think you would have a child with necessarily, or wouldn't even consider like, in other words, would, did you just start with dating someone and forgive me if I'm too uh, explicit, but it, when you say date, I assume you may engage in sexual relations with this individual. Um, yeah, like I wouldn't, I don't like having sex just for fun. It's not fun for me just to have sex. I, to me, it's a mental thing. Um, and so I guess but dating not... is, dating is only fun for me too, if I can see a long-term thing with them. Sure. 
So, but not necessarily children. Like children don't have to be a part of the equation for you to engage in a long term. I um, guess sometimes I don't know. I never really explicitly asked any, you know, any guys I dated, like, are children in the picture or out of the picture for you? You know, like oh, I, I did that right away. Uh, I felt like that was a, well with my last ex with with my you know recent ex. Uh, that was something because we had an age gap. Uh, so I was 32. He was 20. And I, yeah. And well, that's so a big deal. you would have to know. At the, it was yeah. a very big deal for me. And it was very difficult for me. Uh, but I asked very like within the first couple of months, I was like, you know, do you see children? Like, do, do you want children? And he was like, yeah. So I knew that that was something that I had to evaluate. Um, yeah. And it came to a point where we we planned my six, almost seven-year-old. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's another reason that the breakdown that. of that relationship is so devastating because uh, we planned this, we planned a, we planned a whole human together. Uh, that's a, that's a pretty big deal, you know, yeah. uh, and, and then I'm saying just be, yeah. if we're the same age, basically is what I was talking about, which most of the guys I've dated have been about the same age and we're, you know, didn't have kids. And so it was like that assumption that to me, at least in my mind, it was always like, if it got to a place where we wanted to commit for longer term than, you know, then if I saw this as like a marriage, um, then I think it would come up, but I just never, it isn't like one of the first questions I ask on dates or it has never been. No, so, I wouldn't say the first question, but I would definitely say within the first couple of months for sure that you, you just got to get things like that out. You, you have to know that like why waste someone's time and why should they waste theirs? Right. If, if they, if you serious, know, if they do want children and know that, yeah. that you don't, uh, there's no reason to even right. continue pursuing that. I guess if it were serious for either one of us to uh, to care enough to ask, you know what I mean? If either one of us had, we're on a mission to either have kids or well, not, Dusu, that, you said then it you should would come like up. Children, right? Dusu, you said you would like children. Yeah, that would be the first question. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get into a relationship or even date unless it was clear that, you know, I eventually want to get married and have children. And okay, if someone so asked Allie, me, I Allie, would say, you... I would say I'm open to it because with wow. the right person, it's because that's what it matters to me, probably because the way I was raised, you know, probably See, my this experience is what I'm as saying. a child. There, I'm not saying that you guys should get married tomorrow, but I'm just saying that there are people out there. Like, I feel like Gusu was just so... Right. Like, you I, know, I, I don't think there's anybody out there for me. And that's just simply not true. Right. You know, here's Allie here who same, you know, she doesn't share every ideal that you share, but she, no children, never been married, but is open to it. Um, I think I would be ages. a good mom. I agree with you, Jess. You I, know, think I, you would. I think I that you would. I would love uh, that experience in a way, but not with the wrong person. So it's never been, I'm never going to push it. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, just private phone calls that I've had with you, just chatting with you. Um, you know, when I talked to you about my children, you were very engaged, like you cared. Um, and I don't know, it, it just, and you're you're not a mother yet, and you have that instinct. So I kind of know that about you. And then Dusu, you know, it, it just it just goes to show with both of you here at this age range, yeah. Um, there are definitely people out there that have not married and have not had children are open to it and want to pursue that. And that's why I was saying, you know, this stream is if you like each other, you get each other's deeds. And if you don't, oh you'll just see it's each other on the YouTube too, It's a big setup. It, it, it is a setup. Oh, no. Oh, no. And I, <laughs> I wish that you two would just, you know, exchange an email uh, address if you want to do that you know it third party i will be the third party um i i'm not a stalker i'm not a weirdo i'm not gonna like send 52 pizzas to your house uh i'll just pass it along uh if you just want to go straight for each other that's open as well uh get in my discord do so um 
I would assume you know what Discord is and, and what yeah, I used it for gaming, but I do use it for my true crime channel as well. Um, so every it's a small group in there, but very trustworthy people. Allie is in there. If you guys want to exchange information, you join the Discord group, you're there. Uh, so, you know, I just, I, I really want to see, I guess, Dusu, I want to see you give, give, give something a try. And Allie is a person that is emotionally intelligent, intelligent, period. Um, definitely has her take and her opinions on things, but is not a person that will beat you up over yours. She's not a doormat, but she's not a bulldozer either, if that makes sense. But you know, um, the, the only thing is, here's the thing, um, and I've seen this before where it's like almost, you know, 99% compatible, but there are few things that are really important that tend to be sort of um So it sort of limits, you know, the, um, what, uh, hooding date. Just name it. So, okay. So for example, um, faith, religion, that's mm -hmm. right. There tends to be the killer. Like most people don't really have, you know, they have their own belief system or they're, and, and that's where, you know, not to be too explicit with, you know, my belief system, but usually I can tell, you know, if, where you know people are in that and where it could be an issue does that make sense where yeah i, I, I think so it's, where, it's tough where to be in a relationship with someone who doesn't be share the same faith where, well, because, where it's, yeah well okay well like for example um Allie, what is your faith like do you have any any like organized religion that is a great faith? question i was brought up um well i went to catholic school for 13 years um so i was and um my dad's side is jewish actually uh, my mom's side is catholic so what are you currently al um i don't practice like i don't go to church every sunday but i or like don wells Saturday for the Sabbath, but I, um, <laughs> I do, I do feel brother. very spiritual, <laughs> right, right, brother. <laughs> I do feel very spiritual and I'm very interested in having morals and values and ethics are very important to me. Um, but no, I don't practice. I feel like you and I are on the same wavelength with that because I don't necessarily feel like I have to be spiritual to be a good person. Like I kind of know what's right and wrong. You know, I, right. stealing from my friend's family or anyone is, is that's just inherently wrong. I, I really don't need a religion to tell me that. Um, cheating on a significant other, a spouse, inherently but, wrong. You but don't it do does that. give you um, a, like, a, something to follow. And I think humans do... Yeah, I'm just a lot of people need that. Yeah, and I don't a think guidance. it's all bad There's or all good. Need a, like, a guidance. Yeah, and I and like Robbie has a very a big aversion to LDS, but like <laughs> said, and as oh Gima my god, said, you know what, Allie, don't even good. bring it up. I'm sorry, don't even bring it up. Do you know any good, good people, LDS people? Because I do. There are At good Robbie, people and bad people of every faith. There is. That's not the definition of a good person you know it, it just matters how you treat people and a lot of people do need those sort of rote um things to follow in order to be good like don what Wolf claw robbie that. makes another appearance and i get verbally abused oh my god Allie. that was intense that night I, I i'm gonna let you take the reins I, I, I'm just I don't know if I can be as diplomatic as you were. You were very diplomatic, and that was intense. Uh, well, I try to be because yeah. I, I always, you know, I, I it kind of bothers me that I'm never going to live out this dream because I always wanted to be a judge. 
<laughs> like, well, I did. I, I had like this plan in my head. It's my so number cool, one though. plan was that I wasn't going to have children, that I wanted to travel the world, but I also wanted to be a police officer, a lawyer, and eventually a judge. I like know. that was I mean, like my life plan. It completely did not go that way. Um, but I do plan to resume my studies in the fall of this year. Really? Oh, I'm yeah, so never happy too to late. hear that. Good for no, you. No, it's definitely not too late. And I'm very excited about it. But I just, you know, I think that I would have made a fair judge and an ethical judge. I would never have accepted bribes or things like that. Yeah, or I agree. Crazy. You're very good at that. You're very good at remaining kind of diplomatic and hearing both sides, even just with your chat. It's just, it's, I can see that in you. Yeah, because it's important. Uh, you know, you, you just have to kind of figure out the situation. And I loved with the Murdoch case, when <laughs> the defense, uh, Jim Griffin, was up for Alec Murdoch. He's giving closing arguments. And he asked Judge Newman, um, can I play the audio? And Judge Newman's response was so perfect because it's exactly what a judge does. You know, he looked at him and said, you're asking me what you can do? I rule over objections. Like, that's your job to present a case. This is my job. Why are you asking me what you should do? You should know that, you know? Totally. So, yeah, you know, there's different levels of things, but uh, with a judge, it's just being objective and, you know, it, whichever side objection, well, you have to know the law. You have to know what is going on to say sustained or, you know, overruled. Um, and that matters in a case. It, it matters what evidence is allowed in or out it really will affect the outcome of a case. Imagine if, because in the middle of that trial, OnStar, who originally told the prosecution, yeah, we don't really have anything. In the middle of the trial, OnStar reaches out to the prosecution and says, oh, wait a minute, we see something here. And yeah. sends something to them. All of a sudden, the prosecution has to scramble Defense has to scramble. There's new information. We see where he threw his wife's phone out the window, mm -hmm. where it was found, and, and the speed of his car, and all of those things. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there's just a lot. There, there's a lot. I, I feel like I just went off on an Alec Murdoch. You well, know, when the facts change, your opinion <laughs> should change. I mean, it's you should yeah. evolve when the facts change. It's Otherwise, it's kind of strange if you don't. Yeah. Anyway, so back to Thusu, if that's okay, I just, it was my <laughs> oh, answer. Yeah. I'm open to religion sure. is the thing nowadays. Yeah. If the person I dated goes to church and that's important to them, I would go because I'm an open person really? to me. Oh, yeah. So if you it would was just a, openly go. You wouldn't so I, like I would say, give, what is the religion? It what's it about? I would give it a chance because with a new person, okay. with a new perspective, things change in, in the same way you're trusting. saying. I just, what's the harm in trying it out again? I don't see or a harm. Something else I, I feel like a, per, a person like Dusu does need a very trusting person. Um, well, and I, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that um, I think it. the problem, though, is it, it can feel somewhat unbalanced when you don't share the same... Um, I would say uh, strong convictions, right? And uh, established faith as the person you're with. Mm -hmm. So if I'm with someone who doesn't have a strong faith of a, say an organized religion that I do, um, then what happens is that there's like, a, uh, that there's an unequal burden where then yeah. the other person has That's to perfect accommodate word. it. Unequal burden. Because essentially, because anything. your your faith 
uh, your belief in your organized religion is so strong that a person that is with you will have to either conform to that or they're just completely off the table. So that does limit, you know, who right. or, you know, what, what you would date. But if you do have those beliefs, then I don't see any reason why you should not pursue women that, that share those same beliefs. And the thing is, I come from a Catholic background as well. So that's why. Oh, okay. That's my entire so, family. Yeah. And, <laughs> but me too. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, well, so that's where I think it's funny. Um, can I now just say true. with conviction, Catholics are so ridiculous like the joke like we're just all gonna f up like monday through saturday and just repent on sunday is so true um my ex's family is hardcore catholic um i would literally get plastered with these people in their it's rich like big ass house yeah. while they're just feeding me alcohol like on a saturday and i swear on sunday everything was better and Monday, we'll just start again. Um, yeah. So it's Fat Tuesday. Yeah, it's just so. But that's there's not me. That, that's <laughs> my experience with Catholicism. But yeah. So, but, but you it, can see the contrast, you know, by yeah. name association alone, it, it's not equal. Clearly, see, I, I don't feel like it's really like that here. Right. Um, I don't know where you're from, Thusu. I don't know if you ever said it or not, but wherever. Um, <laughs> yeah, U.S. Well, I could tell that, but where I, I I would suspect East Coast. Did we ever get an answer to that, or that was no? Just, I don't think okay. so. I think you guessed that last time though, and he said no. Did I guess East Coast? Yeah, I'm still gonna guess East Coast for him. Like maybe, and, and he's not gonna say, and I'm not. I don't want him to say if he doesn't want to. But I'm gonna guess. I don't know what I guessed last time. Uh, Al, I'm gonna guess like Connecticut uh maybe like maybe very traditional uh well no Where's not traditional. College? have you ever been to connecticut are you crazy um no, no. there are those parts of it some uh but there's some crazy parts of connecticut uh but yeah no i just i definitely feel east coast for thusu uh but whatever i mean it doesn't matter he he doesn't he doesn't want to say that so so yeah but do you think i'm right or do you think he's from like washington state yeah <laughs> i think more like that really mm -hmm. all right well this is not going to give us a hot <laughs> hey we have to keep a few mysteries yeah, <laughs> yeah well it, nothing wrong so, uh no the, pressure. The, the thing the thing about religion for me is that and for maybe Thusu, it's important for that person to come in the relationship already rooted in a very strong faith. And for me, mm -hmm. it, I wouldn't be that person, but I would be that person where I'm so open. I know my perspective has changed since I grew up in the religion. I know I grew up in a version of Catholicism that may not be my partner's version of Catholicism. And so yeah. I would be open to seeing it through new eyes or their version of a faith, whatever it is, because to but that me, would feel that's unfair, part of though. it. But I love yeah, it. I, I, love I really it. wouldn't just openly um, agree. I wouldn't be exactly, you know, hateful I'd, towards it, but I'd I would open question to it. it. What, what is this about? Uh, who leads it? You know, what what's going on here? Like, I would need to know more before I just jump right into that. I would like to see it through my partner's eyes in a way. You know what I mean? Because it might I love be your totally romanticism, different. Al. I love your it's, romanticism. I call myself a hopeless idealist in life. Like, I, I have I think you're picture. a hopeless romantic, but I think it's very cute. I think I just don't see it as romantic because I rarely, that's not been my goal ever is romantic stuff it's been idealistic well, but I'm you very, kind of are. how like, i see the world really i could hear you yeah but to me i see it as 
I'm hopeful in business that B corporations are the future, that we can change the world, that things are going to get better, that there are that technology can actually be a positive thing. That's why like scientific skeptic bums me out sometimes because I love Yeah, my brain, well, I'm just going to say I'm I have hopeful. to object to that because can tech as a whole be helpful to humans? It, yes. It's humans is who it, it, use it wrong. It's insanely misused. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I, I'm fearful of what's going on with AI. Uh, I think that would be a completely different stream, but right. just as a whole, I'm, I'm like, what the hell are you guys doing? Artificial intelligence is really more of an issue with the people wielding it and exactly. how it is Everything constructed. Is. And so same with and, religion and it's for me. Really not erring on the good side. Um, even though it could, it has potential mm -hmm. to do great good. It's not. Um, it's being used in a highly sexual manner. Um, it can be. which yeah. is is sex inherently bad? No. But when you look at it as a whole, if someone can buy a sex doll that is to their specifications. Um, is that good but or bad that are humans we... are isolating off from one another? I That's a weird question for someone right. like me who doesn't really like humans. Um, so <laughs> I'm like, uh, maybe you that's not that, bad. But, but it is, but it is bad. But I actually do. Yeah, I mean, I need, I feel like people like myself, people like Al, people like Dusu, um, there's some need in us to express ourselves, um, even though we typically don't enjoy the general population. When we find people like each other, we're like, hey, I like you. Right. Hey, I want to keep talking to you because and you, get, you, you get bring hopeful. something to the table. Yeah. Yeah. But you, but you know, um, the chat that you posted up about watching out for new relationships that mirror you. Um, I think it's great advice, uh, but for me, I don't, I don't think I'm looking for someone that mirrors me. I really do think that some of the expectations I have are really more fundamental because I feel like I'm very malleable in other respects outside of, you know, uh, convictions of faith, you know, which I think tonight it's into like child rearing and such. But beyond that, I mean, at most, maybe just someone who is like intelligent and kind. That's pretty much it. I mean, honestly like okay i know we're not to put on a spot alley but you know obviously everything that you seem to be that i've seen of you you're very intelligent and you seem very um uh, warm and you know uh very diplomatic right but the thing is all those things I, those are great right but sometimes like when i was mentioned about my expectation of having family we do have to have you do have to have some uh understanding of what your beliefs are right so even if everything right. else if you were 99 percent everything i could ever want in a for woman, everything um that's kind of the message i think you're describing and I, i'm putting it in a really blunt harsh way mm -hmm. But that, that saying is a saying for a reason. Right. Um, be yourself, you know. Right. Uh, jumping straight into this is what my partner, the person I like, believes in. I'm going to go for that. Um, I, do what yeah, you want uh, and li live how you want. But I would just, as your friend, just caution against uh, doing that right away. If there oh, yeah. was something that I was into and a, a guy took a liking to me, whatever, um, and I'm like, hey, I'm into this, and he's jumped right in because I liked it, I, I, I would kind of just side eye him just no, a little bit. I'd like, never, well, you're, you're I'd not going to ask just, him on it? Or... I'd never just take it full, like, on as it is mine. I would be open to seeing it through their eyes, no matter what it is, whether it's a religion or That's why I said I or love a hobby. In you. Because I know it's hap it's changed my perspective on a lot of things, not my core foundational roots, because I think I told you guys last time, I'm a brand strategist. What a brand strategist does is literally breaks down for a company, like what is their mission, vision, core values, 
and figures that out for a brand so that they know who they are in their core before they're showing themselves to the world or before they go down wrong paths. And I think that's what's wrong with a lot of brands or companies today is they're too malleable. They're too willing to just go with the next trend. And I've been in marketing like for over 10 years too. And I see that and that's not okay. And so for me, you're saying that's religion. You guys are, but to me, I've defined my brand values as a human, I, my human values, my core values are this, I'm not going to waver from them. And whether well, if or not- that's what you say you, they are, then I believe you. Well, that's what I mean. I'm not saying going to someone's faith or whatever is going to change who I am. I'm saying I'm open to a different version that I've never seen before. And if it aligns with my values- That's what you're saying. You're not what? saying I'm going to join a cult for someone. No, I'm you're saying if it aligns saying, with no, my that's values. What believe in. Okay, I'll check it out. Yeah. But that's not going to change everything that I am. If I think this shit's crazy, I'm getting I'm, out of it. They'll find I'm, out real quick if that's the so, case. So me and know? Dusu jumped the gun. Um, and we I'm very we strong. It's the worst head. there. Yeah. And I hear why you might think that because maybe that is what it sounded like. I didn't really say it this way, but I'm like, I have some serious things that have happened in my life that will never, I mean, it's who I am in my core and those things will not change. And I'd be very clear with my partner about those things. You said I'm never, and then you stopped and, but no, you, you should say that with conviction. If, if there's some things about you that are just straight core values, be open about them. Right. Um, there and are other I, people that share those same exact values. Exactly. It doesn't have to be everyone. Um, right. Even if you say something and I'm like, yeah, well, I don't believe in that. Uh, I'm not going to hate you for it. Like, that's religion your, that's is different to everyone. You know, it's how you yeah. interpret it. And, and I grew up in a certain version of Catholicism based on the school and how they taught me and all this stuff. And I saw some good and bad things come out of it. You know, well, my, fa my favorite story is this, is that my grandparents were straight Catholic to the core. Uh, my mom and her sisters and her brother all went to Catholic schools and, you know, Catholic, Catholic, Catholic. And but they did not take me or my cousins or my siblings uh, to church. Like we went like twice a year. We went on Christmas and on Easter, you know? So when I was of age and, and got my, my period, uh, you know, my aunt says to me, and sadly she, she passed away last September, but she raised me. And she said to me, you know, don't listen. Uh, now that you have this, don't have sex or God is, is literally going to hate you. And I'm like, what? Like, what does that even mean? Like, I am bleeding, lady. Like, I need something Weird. for that. I love her. And she's probably laughing at me right now. And like, that's not how it was, Jessica Marie. Like, I can hear her saying this in my head. But, you know, it, it was like that. And then... Yep. You know, I did have sex because I just wasn't properly taught on it. Exactly. So that was something that, am I going to beat my aunt up and say she was a, a terrible person? No, she just didn't know. But I learned from her that that was not the way. So with right. my own children, none of them have children and they are very focused on their own life. Uh, my, my, my older son is in law school. Um, so they just... You know, they know that having children young, uh, as I did, is not the way. Right. Because I, it, it's not. I instilled that in them, that that is not the way you do this process. Right. And some Catholics life. do and some don't. But I will say, Catholic school didn't teach Oh, listen, about I experienced the Catholic wrath. And if you were Catholic, and if you ever experienced the wrath of a Catholic family, um, it's, 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 a, oh, it's yeah. a sight to behold. I'll just say that. And maybe Thusu's experience with Catholicism is different. We don't know, you know, until we're open to seeing it through someone else's 
eyes because how would we know? But it shapes how you will choose to rear your children, I assume. Absolutely. Yes. So that's where the conflict truly arises. Well, so it's know. where the breaking of the chains arises because I saw what being uneducated about sex, my body did. Um, so I chose a different path with my children. I was just very open. It was awkward. I'll be honest. Yeah, um, sure. it, it was awkward, but you know, after each child, it got easier and it just talking to them very openly about their bodies. You, you have to understand self before you understand others. That's just my belief. Uh, so, you know, with my daughters in particular, uh, I, I did both, uh, boys and girls cause I, I have sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. Uh, but with my girls, I, I went very much in depth about depth, about body, um, touch, uh, who should touch, what should touch, um, what that might feel like, what feelings that those things might lead to, uh, with my boys, definitely talk to them about their penis, uh, using correct terms because that's a must. Uh, and that's more of a protection for your kids. Um, if your kids are ever touched by a person that they should not right. ever be touched by, you want them to be able to tell law enforcement that Catholic priests. Yes. You want them to be able to say they touched my penis. Uh, they put their penis, wherever, uh, things like that. I'm getting graphic, but I'm just, but it's reality. That's how stuff like that goes on for so long without being yeah. talked about is cause that's ingrained in them not to talk about it. That to me yeah. is unhealthy in that religion. And so if, if Thusu were my partner and, you know, I would make sure we talked about that. Like, can we, yes, Catholicism says this, but do you see the detriment that that can cause if, what if one of our children was being touched? Wouldn't you want to know? Yes, absolutely. So because... <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be honest. My, um, my experience growing up was, uh, uh, my, I, I was always taught very openly about sex, but well, it was. that's your experience. And I love that. I didn't, that's most good. Catholics don't have that. Sure. sure. And, but I'll be honest with you. Um, I, I would say many, I don't want to say most, but maybe most, uh, people who claim to be Catholic oftentimes are frankly hypocrites. So they just, they don't actually have a, uh, a faith that they live out. It's more of just something that, well, I was born this way, you know, so that's why right. I attribute myself as it. They don't truly believe it. They don't have sort of the passion. They don't have the, um, the convictions. They just, it's seen as merely like uh, something they inherited. And so that mm -hmm. oftentimes sort of um, confiscates people's perceptions of Catholics because that's they see exactly these what I'm people. Saying. And so for me, that's why I have to have discernment because I've seen I've seen people, even in the, even among Catholics, who claim to be Catholics, who right. are not actually, who I believe truly are not practicing Catholics. You know, they call they have different names for relaxed Catholic, etc. But the sure. truth is, individuals who have a sincere and uh, earnest practice of their faith, those are very rare, because again, most just simply use it as a um, as a, maybe a label. I haven't seen a true. Catholic. I didn't experience that growing up. That's why I, I say I'm open to it because to me, it's a beautiful thing. If any religion that is, you know, got, got goodness at its core is, is a beautiful thing. It can be, but so many wield it in the wrong ways. And you, you, as a child, you don't know that, you know, well, it can be, but you have to actually believe it so I'm never going to pretend or, and I'm not saying that you're saying that I'm just saying myself, mm -hmm. but I'm never going to pretend to believe in something I don't or things like that, because there's just, what I think is there is some part of a soul. I believe that there's something like that exists, 
But as far as, you know, the big puffy clouds and the guy in the big, you know, white suit sitting at the top of throne and stuff, and then hell, you're just completely on fire forever. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think that's what it is. Um, Do you literally I, believe that in that is Catholic? Literally oh Catholic? no, I, I'm I'm just saying. Well, Christianity as as a whole. Um, yeah, not that Catholicism God, is Christianity, but I, I'm just saying. Purgatory. Yeah, yeah, purgatory. it's a little different. The notion of being, yeah, separation, God, fires, and how it's defined. Yeah, it's kind of through uh, Christianity in there because I I think that's more widely. Uh, sure. practice Fire brimstone version. Yeah. Yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. But see, the, here's the thing, though. Um, <laughs> you really have to sort of, I guess in a way you kind of have to role play to see, but there's certain, okay. Role play? Okay, what, what I tell mean. Tell me about role play. Why did you pick that word? <laughs> now she's perked up. Uh, I, I'm intrigued now, yes. Why, a thought why experiment. did you pick that word? Role play meaning a thought experiment as in, okay, let's have a scenario to play out. Wow. And given a situation, okay. what do um, you do? Because you when react? I think of that, I have to be honest, I think in sexual terms. Oh, gotcha. Um, okay. Well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> could it be? So, I role, love how he responds to that. Well, okay. Yep. Moving on. Ha <laughs> ha. Moving on. Go well, ahead. Well, okay. So. Role, as in, <laughs> for example, uh, parental role, husband role, that's what I mean. So role playing as in, okay, so let's do a thought experiment. Imagine you're in the role of a parent, right? And, uh, say for me, I'm a husband. Well, I don't have and, to imagine. I'm actually right. there. So. <laughs> you and me yeah. do so. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, um, but, okay, so I go through these thought experiments, though, sometimes where, okay, I put myself in that position how would I react given certain situations, right? And I think this might be, okay, again, this might be too much, especially for a first date and such, but I think this might be really revealing for prospective matches just to see, okay, how do you imagine yourself reacting in, in these roles and uh, situations, right? A, a, within those uh, roles of, you know, marriage and spouse, et cetera, because a lot of times we're not tested until we are tested. So right. sure, this idea like, hey, you know, I wouldn't mind trying that, like you said, Ali. Strategic Allie, planning. There we go. So if if you if you like the idea of, you know, okay, well, I think I'm open to, you know, uh, someone else's faith and so on. Uh, instead of going through it, like putting it out in production, so to speak, let's start in some development first, right? Let's mm -hmm. let's do some testing. And that's where like the, the sort of role playing is. Okay, so if, Give, give a situation that would test you and test the boundaries of the relationship, especially when it comes whether it be child rearing or maybe decision making. Because that's where I feel like people eventually will either break up or, you know what I mean? You have to sort of come to that. I to, am I making sense at all? Like, is it it's worth like it a, all? It's, this is like a, a playbook or a handbook of like what you sign. Um, you sure. is the ideal that you guys agree. This is what our aim is. These are our goals. This is our strategy. This is the plan. Yeah. And if we don't live up to that, this is what I do for work. And it's what, what's oh, interesting is, is that there's a couple that I know of on YouTube and that I follow that does this for their lives. And to me, that is so cool that they're using like strategic planning initiatives and terms for their family and for their goals oh, wow. their court what do they want to do this year as a family what are their family goals what are their what's their purpose as a family what is their expectations for they have several kids and you know what what do we want our kids to have learned by the end of this year or you know whatever it is that and to, you can totally do that as a family and i love it it's nerdy but for people <laughs> like you and me, maybe that's like, and that they found each other gave me hope too. It's yeah. cute. Well, I love that. I love the sort of theoretical aspect of it. But in this case, I would think of it really more of like as risk management, you know, and, and yeah. being able to develop uh, mitigating strategies. So if you yep. have, if you can think of, again, risks during the course of the relationship of marriage, how do you mitigate them? Can they be mitigated? You know, like there's certain terminology used for mitigation where it's like, do you want to own them? the risk, right? Do you mm -hmm. want to actually do something to prevent it or do you want to do something? That I, just I have to interrupt this chat, guys. 
uh, Toe Jam, uh, very, very original name. Um, he, he's just he's just coming right out and saying, just marry her, dude. Just, just, <laughs> just right. get on with it. Right. You know, That's so our style. As you can tell. And, and he's also calling you sexy. I, I don't know how to take that. I, yeah, yeah. Um, and then That's we different. have Nance bringing up the rear and saying, just oh, if he doesn't marry Allie, I will. Oh, competition. So we have a nice. lot of support. The equalizers here. Oh, okay. uh, he is saying, I nice. mitigate stuff with my peen. Just random uh, information. Just, yeah. No one Thanks, needed. equalizer. <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks for sharing. Uh, Dr. Jam, you just interrupted an entire love session for this nonsense. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. We were getting pretty nerdy. I don't know if that's love session for most that's, people. What do you mean? Nerdy <laughs> is so good. Like, what's wrong with it? Like, I, I would much prefer it. Same here, no, but, but, you know. No, but, you know, it, it does bring a good point. You guys point. are Honestly, my I people. Can't... I feel like you guys are my kind of tribe. You just are. <laughs> but you, you can't, like, like, the way I'm talking, I can't talk with can these I people. come to the wedding? Right, I feel can like I that, too. Can I be second row, at least? But, can I cheer really loudly? Is anybody yeah. going to hate me? But I'm not based, like Catholic faith that he wants, it sounds like. I'm trying to tell yeah. him I'm open, but he's trying to tell me what I'm hearing is that. Well, I think, but okay. That so matters very I appreciate important. that you are open to uh, a person that in. you would be attracted <laughs> to and think of as a potential spouse uh, to be open to what they're open to. I think what Thusu is saying that he would prefer you to have your own thoughts, um, but Do. not that he's closed off to you and you're not particularly closed off to him. Um, so that's that's the I, over, overall thing. I agree. But I'm saying when we get to know each other, say say we went on dates, say we did get to know each other, and he heard the stories of what why I am who I am, and I heard why he is who he is, what I know to be true is when you learn new facts, your perspective changes, like we were talking about in the Alex Murdoch trial. It's it's what happens. You can't help but but be flexible in certain things. I'm not saying we would or we wouldn't. I'm saying it you is You know what possible. I'm getting from this stream? Well, here's that the we're thing, all though. just jaded individuals, <laughs> and yeah. I, I'm just going to hang up my hat. It's I'm just true. gonna hang up my hat. Yeah, I'm going this scientific life, skeptic and just <laughs> buy. Like <laughs> there's no hope. In the chat. We're doomed. Like, yeah, there's no hope. It's all done. Yeah. We all hate each other. There's no hope for anyone. Um, but I do like to think, like you do, Al, that there is hope. Um. I don't That's why I'm feel... saying I'm a hopeless idealist. I just yeah, no, I don't. I, I, I love you for that. <laughs> I I'm more hate it, but... romantic myself. Yeah, admit, and I know you I are. I am a romantic, yeah. Just tell him about my sign. You know all about signs. We heard about his. What's mine? I'm trying to remember. Oh, okay. I, I want to say Sagittarius. Um, That's my it? rising sign. Yeah. So that's your I'm sign. A Scorpio. That's your main sign. Huh? Scorpio? Oh. Uh this is a Libra. Um uh -huh. that's that would Let's be an get astrological thing. up in here. <laughs> yeah, it, that would be an interesting pairing. Um I could see the sex being really good. Um, but the communication <laughs> not, and that's really, it's kind of really crazy that, cause I, I didn't remember that. I really didn't, uh, about either. I, I think I did remember Thusu was a Libra. Ow. I don't know why I didn't remember you were a Scorpion or a Scorpio, but it would kind of what has already been displayed. Like you say, yeah, I'm really open to what you're open to, but the Libra kind of rejecting that in some yeah. way of saying, uh, well, I, I kind of want you to have your own thoughts. 
Uh, so you're getting with a I have my own thoughts. And he <laughs> would be getting no, I, I, I know you do. I, I know you do. But this is what I'm saying to, to both of you. Uh you you, Allie, would be getting with a thinker, and then you, Thusu, would be getting with someone that's emotional. And mixing those two pairings can be very deep and very conflicting. Um, like I typically direct water signs like Scorpios, Pisces, Cancers see, towards see why Earth. I'm, flexible, sign. I'm water. <laughs> yes, but I, I typically like the, the Earth signs you guys do a lot better with, like Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. Okay. Um, for Thusu, for Libra, I would direct him to other air signs and then to fire signs. Uh, but it, this isn't a science. You know, there's no. people that I are... I just was interested. Together. It's funny. Yeah, the, it just you asked, so I'm telling you. But it's um, I, it's it's kind of strange because I, I, I feel like I've already seen it play out, like kind of just yep. now. You know, so it's just kind of, yeah, it's kind of interesting, kind of funny. But, you know, I, I guess it just comes down to can you overcome those things? Do you have the chemistry? Do you have the laugh factor because it matters? Yeah. Um, and even like Thusu, I think, lacks humor, not because he doesn't have it. Not because he doesn't have it. Not because I, I think you don't have it. Uh, just because you, you've become so analytical. Right. Um, yeah. That you've lost sight of that. But I feel like if there's a person out there that, that brings that out of you, it, it's the best thing for you. Um, and it will help you become a better self. Um, Allie, I, I feel like Allie is just such a ready person. I don't think she's thirsty. I don't yeah. think she's like, hey, guys, I'm open. No. But I feel like Allie is secure in herself. She knows who she is. She's not rigid. She is open to things. Uh, she just hasn't found that person yet. So. Yeah. Well, I don't know too much about um, astrology. astrology. But yeah. I will say that. From what I have seen of Ali, Ali would be, for me, um, and I'm just speaking personally, that, um, would be a very high temptation. This is one where I would, and I've, I've, there's, I've met women, you know, in my life when I was young, when I was ready, I kind of had a similar situation where they were very compatible. They had very similar mindsets really gelled with but i wasn't ready yet um yeah. in this case ali is just like 99 percent. like everything is very compatible with me but again it's one of those temptations where i know the prudence i was like you know there in terms of our beliefs is our faith that might introduce a conflict well i shouldn't even say might i think it probably would and ali can correct me if you disagree, but I, I think the because of my own adherence to faith, and because you know of your history within and your belief system that has evolved from that, it could easily become a uh, uh, a cause of um, uh, strife, you know, a conflict. And I don't disagree wow. with that i just think that conflict is how we grow as humans too it's also how we evolve and mm. that it's a necessary thing in any relationship to have some conflict and it's just which flavor can we deal with you know and it's up to it, sure. every individual to figure that out you know well i definitely understand where you come from in terms of you know evolving right and using conflict as a way to refine ourselves the only my only concern would be and this is where the temptation comes in is that 
I would be concerned that it might tempt me to compromise my faith. And what I mean by that is, and what you were saying kind of alluded to it, which is, you know, I like to hear other people's um, belief system and kind of uh, learn from it and see it, you know, react. And I've seen it before where people sort of become, they, I've loved seen both, but I've seen it probably more often, people tend to soften their faith. And oftentimes it happens because of some either traumatic life experience or maybe some uh, fork in the road in their life where they have to make a decision, right? And it just, it's a safer path. And so that's where I'm just, I, w- I would worry, and this is where maybe we, I, I mentioned previously about the, the, um, the unequal burden. It's where, as someone of faith, I, it would feel very important to me to share the same faith, right? Because we mm-hmm. could equally share that burden in life, whether it be rear the children, things that happen in life. I could depend on them to have that same value system, to, see, to put God first and to put those values, that, you know, the formal aspect of that faith in practice. So when mm-hmm. the other person doesn't, it can feel to me as though that could cause an imbalance where now I, ha- I have to do the extra work to then discern you know, or to reconcile my faith with that of my spouse's sort of um, interpretation or their right. own set of values that may conflict with it. Does that make sense? When I there is some yeah, yeah. disparity between the two. I just think that's a false dichotomy. That's the way I view it. You're making it as an either or. And I see it as a, when you're a partner, you know, your partnership, you're able to Figured, you know, you're saying these things, they're, they're very trite sayings that people say, you know, God comes first, but I, I don't know what that means to you. You know what I mean? Not, yeah, that might um, be the issue, though. Yeah. Because if you don't know what so that I means, I would want to yeah, understand, I would want to understand what it means to you, because I've heard other people say that, and it isn't what I think maybe you mean. I don't know until That's I understand what it means to you because i've heard like you even said yourself there are people who wield religion who aren't really that way and maybe that's been a lot of my experience as well so when i see your version of what you're talking about what it means to you i think that colors things and that and it deepens things it becomes like a a real thing rather than a uh, abstract oh you have to put god first because you hear that everywhere, but what does that mean to you? I would need to know. Sure. I, it's t- absolutely absurd how much prominence we put on religious beliefs. It's just completely absurd. I don't think it's absurd at all. It's, I think, in fact, I feel like it's absurd. No, you don't listen, have to feel like we, I just do. Okay, here, here's the thing. This might sound absurd to those you know who aren't believers. Like, oh, who cares? But I guarantee you, Especially in t- like today's safe. day and age, there will be things that happen, that occur, that will test your beliefs and your convictions. Things you thought you knew. things that Like you your speak core values sense. that you decide exactly. are true that I've done for myself? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but, but does that need to be defined as a religion? That's my... See, if you and I were to talk over time, you'd hear my, what has brought me to come to this point, And I would hear the same from you. And what I've found is when you do break down these trite little things, a lot of times there's so much commonality. It's that we make everything binary. You're Republican or you're Democrat. You're black or you're white or you're Catholic or you're not. You know what I mean? And really, when it comes down to the actual nitty gritty, we're very similar. It's just we use different terms and people misuse a lot of these terms or put on a mask of these terms and it becomes something it isn't, you know? But when you break it down, it can be the same very thing you're talking about. I'm not, mm. though it may be similar, I'm not sure how much of the same it would be. And I suppose maybe that is where I cut hairs or so to speak. I I see, hmm. you know, even in faith, there are certain things that are sort of gray areas right things that might be traditions things that might be like you know catholic for example they change from the latin mass right to english thing there could be things changes in tradition i forgot the term they use but yeah you could say that certain things are somewhat uh malleable right accommodating 
especially as the times change, size change. But there are also things that are dogmatic. So right. perhaps it would depend on those beliefs and core values that I would consider to be dogma. And at that point, right. any difference or compromise would be seen as detrimental to, yep. to the to the um, relationship. And as I said, it carries over to you know, ch child rearing as well. I agree. And to me, there's ways you're, we may be using different languages for the same thing. You know what I mean? And you, we might find that if we let that organically come out in conversation over time and like equalizer saying, I also think this is a solid point is sometimes it takes something to really impact you. He's saying it in a, yeah. <laughs> probably in a gross boy way that he likes to get reactions from <laughs> but um what he's saying i believe is sometimes it takes something to really shake your core values to change everything like sometimes you don't you can say this is how you'd react but you don't know until it happens okay and he wants me to quote him verbatim which is fair i don't want to misquote you equalizer sometimes <laughs> all it takes is a load right in your core values to change everything and i would agree it sometimes you think this is what you believe and what you feel but it does take an outside force to shake you and really test certain things to see who you are what you stand for what what yeah, what well, your core values truly are you might say they're this but until you're tested how do you actually know yeah well like you know paul says we die every day we we're tested every day and we will fail constantly. But that's why I guess I put so much importance in having a, a, a spouse you know, or a significant other who has the same faith because of the fact that we will be suffering together. We will be falling right. together. And I, I guess in a way, I, I wouldn't want to put another person, for you, for example, I would not want to put you in an unfair position where I have certain expectations, right? That I would need to know I what they are. That's the hard part is this is so abstract. Sure, like what sure. if our core values align? It's just, I call it something different okay. based on my experiences, you know? Well, okay. Well, how about this? What about the Catholic faith that you, okay. What about the Catholic faith? Did you step away from or feel that it was not your core values? Because I say I know you said you believe in your own, or you kind of, even though you're born that you created your own. So, since you know, I'm pretty much just saying, oh yeah, I'm Catholic. That's pretty self, probably self-explanatory to you, no, maybe at least dogmatic. It's no, not okay. because so, every Catholic I've ever met decides certain things are priority that their core values are. You know what I mean? But they let other things go. We've talked about what, it already. But what about dogma? Like in, in terms of the, the church's dogmatic what practice. To you is, what to you is unnegotiable has to be true. I want to, let's hear yours. Well, it, it would have to be the tenets of the faith. Uh, the How many dogma. are there? Shoot. Can I have to pull out my catechism again? Well, what do you live by? What 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 to you is non-negotiable with a partner? You know, to me, that's what's important is the few things. It can't be everything. If you believe in everything, you believe in nothing. And if you you got to pick what are your core values. Like for a company, well, it's three yeah. to five things. That's tough for me to say. Okay, I I was tempted to just start like listing, you know, certain tenets of the faith, but I think that would be a waste of time. Maybe, maybe, forgive me, maybe it'd be easier if you said what you disagreed with. Would would that okay. be less, perhaps? What, what I'm sure there's I, lots I that you agree a, with, but some you don't. What I, I love the idealism of a lot of religions. I truly do, including Catholicism. I think on paper, idealistically, in my mind, it's a beautiful thing. What has changed my view of it is, in practice, the hypocrisy um, that I feel that humans have done to it. And that will happen in any faith, I believe. So to me, it's it's hard, but um, for what happened in my life, like I grew up as an only child with a single mother um, who wanted, wanted a divorce from my dad. 
and was told when I was in, when she decided to put me through Catholic school, she was told that that basically means I don't exist as a human when she wanted to get the marriage annulled. So I was in Catholic school and the people in this school were telling her, well, you know, if you get it annulled, that means the child that you're paying for in the school does not exist. And that really hurt my mom. That was very offensive for them to say that because she's working two jobs now just to put me through Catholic school. And they basically pulled the rug out from under her and said, well, she doesn't exist. And I, to me, it's like, well, you should have just asked them that you don't have to pay because if I don't exist, <laughs> then can she go for free? Yeah. Because that is so a slap to a face to a single mother who's just trying to like get back up on her feet and figure it out. And she wants to trust that her faith that she grew up in, she could trust them to put me in that school or be in that school and be well nourished in mentally, you know, physically, all the things. And the fact that they would say that to her is pretty harsh, <laughs> you know? Uh, forgive me. I'm not quite understanding what they mean by that though, that you didn't when exist. You annul, when you annul a marriage, that's what the definition is in Catholicism. Sure, but what do they mean so, by you don't exist? Or what, what are they implying exist. with that? The marriage doesn't exist when you use annulment. It, you would have to get a priest's blessing to annul a marriage. Um, yeah, but you would still be an, uh, considered a legitimate child. No, I mean, they said that literally the dogma is in the in the catechism, or I don't even know exactly where they got that from but that was a huge part of it was like but she does exist here she is she's a person and they're like but that is the mm. point of annulment it erases that marriage in the church's eyes so that erases anything that may have existed i, I know marriage. people who have had no one and um with children i've never heard that that's interesting i i i want to have so to look that's into that my... yeah i've never heard that that's what I'm saying is maybe that's not real for other versions of Catholicism, but that is how I grew up is hearing my mom struggle with that. And that was very painful for her. And, you know, likewise, then for me, I was a sponge. I wanted to be the best. I didn't want to make anything hard for my mom. You know, I just was like, why is she crying? It's my fault. You know, as children, we all do that. May I ask what, um, maybe this, I can ask it to you. And in, in your, do you believe that, what, oh, how should I say this? What would be um, a reason for, well, no, that'd be too much too. I'm trying to figure out, like, when it comes to divorce and annulment, because I know that it is allowed, but. I want to be married how, forever. That's why I never effed no. with it. Like, I'm never, I would never want to go down that road, you know? Yeah. And it's, the thing is, I'm, I'm very much, um, I would never get divorced. Now, if there was a situation where the spouse was, you know, so dysfunctional or dangerous that there had to be a separation or something, mm -hmm. you know, then obviously you react accordingly. I, I mean, right. for the safety of children and yourself, depending on the spouse, but um, I would never remarry. You know, if wife passed away, I would never remarry. Um, that's how I think. That's how I see, yeah. you know, and again, I, I say as one who hasn't lived it, obviously, right. but right. I've lived and enough to, yeah. That's the way I feel too, but I don't, I, again, my mom clearly felt a different way about things, felt necessary to do this and didn't feel supported by the one thing she thought she had to fall back on with ra helping to raise me would be the church and to send me to Catholic school. And they basically said, eh, well, you know, if, if, technically this means she doesn't exist. And she's like, technically actually, She's a very real human. What are you talking about? And it was just like a disconnect, you know, and so sad for my mom. She struggled with it. Hmm. 
so so then okay so how would that though carry over to relationship like would that mean does your opinion on how the like uh annulments like I just thought that was cruel of the church to get sure. so that way to my mother. And it's so impersonal. And it, it felt that those are the things that like hurt me about the church. Then we could get yeah. into the Catholic priests, you know, and that they hid that for so long. That is painful to me. That is not right. God, I don't think would bless that in any way. And to use the that religion as a shield for them for so long is wrong and those poor children for their whole lives are now effed up sure but is that a reflection on the actual faith itself that's, or the people who are in charge of that's the faith what i mean stewardship because there are I people mean. in mm -hmm. we we put pe people pe oh, sorry we put people human beings into positions of stewardship where they ha are responsible Yes. for you know congregation are responsible for uh, the yes. community the church the body interpreting so yeah interpreting god in a way well not so much interpreting here's a okay this is why like i go back to like dogma and such and this is where what's interesting about what you said about the idea of, well she doesn't exist now that's a very loaded statement like what does that mean like it, right. is it like does that invalidate or try, trying to invalidate an individual see i've never heard of that i think whoever said that or whoever was in charge of that was taking it from some some perspective that is certainly not universal um, and that's what but, i'm saying i would like to see catholicism through your eyes because that is my version that's what i grew up with i'm saying there is so much room for subjectivity and interpretation that of course how could i know what version of catholicism you know when that's my experience and to you that sounds alien correct yeah, certainly. I, I think so, I understand better what you mean now. Yeah, the inter in terms of yeah, how people practice their faith. That's what. I, that's all I mean. I mean, I am colored by my experiences. You are colored by yours, and we are only human. We just interpret God in our own ways. But my so question I would, need would be to then: hear yours, your interpretation. If it would be different than that, then I might accept that version of Catholicism. You know. Hmm. Yeah, it, it's tough because, you know, when someone, and now, uh, forgive me, I'm going to ask a question that might be too personal, but uh, did you ever actually like formally step away from the church or like no. apostatize or anything like that? Or was this just no. simply, okay. So, no, I uh, still very much, I would consider, so my parents actually let me decide what religion I wanted to be. So I didn't get baptized straight out of the womb like a lot or you know very early i True. because my dad um came from russia and uh his uh, Orthodox. dad poland no they were actually jewish um okay. so my mom getting married to a jewish guy um but my grandmother who had passed away on that side was russian orthodox catholic so they had already mixed it up back there in poland um, yeah so i have uh families jewish as well the uh so, messianic jews yeah it's a very it gets almost like silly at a point like do we believe in the same core values is basically what i'm that's where I, i've come to because i did go mm -hmm. to synagogue with my grandfather at first but my mom sent me to catholic school and i always say she cheated because what is a girl going to choose for her religion? Well, she's going to choose what all her friends are um, if she gets to choose at a young age. So at seven or eight years old, I got baptized Catholic because I decided I wanted to be Catholic, which is weird, rare type of way to come about becoming in, a Catholic, at least. Usually you're baptized right away. And so I decided to be Catholic. I went to communion. I got um all the sacraments and i just after i graduated uh high school catholic high school all the way kindergarten through uh 12th grade i went to catholic school i just didn't go to mass on purpose on my own sure. after that i mean for certain family members for holidays for things that were of import i would go but i was a little bit 
I wanted to see the world from a different viewpoint, you know, gotcha. and I yeah. kind of got disillusioned with what, when I looked back and I started going to therapy or, you know, I, I wanted to see a counselor just to talk about anything. Cause I, again, I was an only child. I didn't have siblings to discuss anything about this. I went to Catholic school, which they're not the most open of people. And um, so, and then I had a single mom who just had a million jobs and was trying to raise me and do her best. And then I had foreign dad and grandfather who, you know, came from mother Russia. They were cold war, mm. you know, imports basically just trying to <laughs> get along, you know, with everyone and trying not to be hated as, you know, Russians and Polish types yeah, in that time. Definitely. So I, I was very alone on my whole life. Hence probably why I'm okay being alone now and always have been, always will be I'm very secure in that. But I just was, when I finally realized, oh, maybe I should talk to someone about some of these feelings and these things that don't sit right with me because no one's been really open with me and i guess that's a natural thing to want to talk and i just realized that yeah. like in college <laughs> you know i didn't know yep yeah so, no it's very true anyway that's how i was raised and that colors my view of religion of everything it it just that's what i'm saying like abstractly we can say we disagree but when you hear my story when i hear your story and see what you actually mean by Catholicism, what you believe in, mm -hmm. and you hear what I grew up with and why I felt a little jaded by certain things, but that I'm against it. It's simply the, there are certain things that have colored my view, you know, and I don't believe that's everyone. Gotcha. You know, I will admit, um, cause I, I do not want to give the impression that I am in any way, shape or form, um, you know, perfect or, you know, I'm at here, you know, that I have made mistakes and I will admit, um, you know, even when I was younger, I had to, I had to do a lot of introspection and self-reflection on, on my own choices. I, I will say for me, at least my crisis of faith had a little bit different, um, situation because I feel like I had the best of examples. I had some really great uh, influences when it comes to faith. Uh, so by contrast, I had everything going for me. Right. But I, I still. That sounds beautiful. Well, it is. It was great. and uh, But I will say, but I am at the end of the day, I'm my own individual. And I still made decisions and I still I still, I think, had to struggle with living my faith. There's a lot of temptation out there and different sure. people have their vices, their things that they um, act as sort of triggers, I suppose. For yeah. me, I think, and for a lot of men, probably share it, but um, I had my own temptations. Part of it was fitting in. Part of it, I think, was women, uh, yeah. so, as that may sound. Um, fair. I mean, so, so yeah. I, you know, I will admit even like, even though I had a great foundation, I still, when I, especially when I went out to the world, I compromised a lot and I had to, I, and it's funny because you mentioned about a lot of hypocrites. It's true. It's tough to be a follower of a faith or a belief system when you fail because you know everything you do is seen as a judgment to your faith it's not just you it would be fine if it was just me but my failings reflect on the entire church the entire belief and system you take that on as of import not everyone does well but see that's the thing i've failed though at times in my life and i'm sure that if you know, if, if someone were to just like take an analysis of my entire life, you know, see it with a microscope and go through my entire life, you know, I, I may not have done much crazy things, but I did enough to where I definitely compromised and Sorry. did what I consider to be wrong. Because you're a human. You know, sure, sure. But, um, but I know that 
for those yeah for those who would want to judge my faith it would be you know an issue with the faith and not me like well why did, i remember hearing it's like well you've already gone this far why not just go a little farther you know if you've already done this why not just right. you know do a little more it's like why do we even adhere to that you know it just it's so much easier to do this you know and there's a lot of that to t- it's, it's tough um so i've had to wrestle with that growing up and now now that i'm older um it, it is a little easier i still deal with you know temptation at times but um it'll always be there and that's one of the things where yeah it, it, you're right it's tough with when you have a, when you're dealing with abstracts it's tough to nail down okay what are the actual exactly. values that we're disagreeing on but then i just worry that um and this is what, like with dating too like how detailed do i need to go in the dating scene what if i speak with someone do i need to go through everything do i need to go through a list of belief systems like what happens if down the road we miss something and then we come to a point where like oh shoot you know we disagree on something that becomes then really you revisit detrimental it. To it. you revisit it and you say this now has become important we didn't foresee this but could I mean, it be too could late you? but could it be too late though what if let's say what you if could. you're okay I'm going to use an example and this is going to be very controversial. So I'm going to, I'm kind of preparing. Okay. Brace yourselves, it. everyone. Brace yourself for it. <laughs> so let's say you have, okay. So let's say you, you marry, you have a child, right? What if you have, okay. What if that child one day, say it's like I don't know, five or six or so, seven, eight, it's around there, um, comes back from school and um, counselor or someone at school says, um, so your child, we think your child um, may um, have um, maybe transgender. And here are some things that we think, you know, would help um in affirming um the child's believe things that the child said he or she wanted to do um that would be something a decision like that today now you know 10 20 years ago probably wouldn't even been brought up but today that's become right. you know a topic now it's yep. not very common mind you so this is no. extreme but right but it's a very divisive and yet very strong opinion like you're not going to find people no, in the middle i mean with that one. To, to me that would be something like you you and jess were both saying where you you go to your partner and you have a deep talk with them about this like okay we didn't foresee this coming but you and your partner are number one and you go together and you both present what feelings are coming up for you using time tested communication skills even if you need to follow a rubric because you're so emotional just get out what you both are feeling then what did we decide on that when hard things like this come up that we couldn't foresee we at least planned for the unforeseeable in a way that these are the sort of things we'll go through when something comes up that might be a trigger thing or that we didn't foresee coming up and then you know we seek out like the best resources on the stuff on what our would own be considered a resource on this subject? i don't know on this but i would like go like we would together i would think in my ideal version of this i don't mm. know enough about the topic let's research this and let's figure out at least for me, what are the things you, if you do, if you say you do, and you say, this is what I've relied upon as my, you know, basis for what I believe, and I would want to see that to understand where you're coming from, at least mm. starting there. And I may not have ever even thought about it. So maybe I don't have anything that uh, to bring to the table, but let's you know, go to what we've decided are our baseline for how to get help on this, whether we decided it was Mm -hmm. we have a counselor we like that we go to together, a therapist type, or is it a priest? Is it a who are our people 
that we've decided are so what I recommend to even you know people who are a brand companies that are a brand or a couple that's like becoming a brand together is you've got your kind of board of directors that you go to when things are tough when who would so you decide on that as a couple beforehand mm -hmm. who are these resources that we trust that's a great point because um the resources that i would trust typically would be obviously you know besides uh the faith such as a church and the bible you know it could be a priest things like that um but when the rubber meets the road on something like this who do we trust and that's important yeah. to have a board of directors you know what and that's you guys I, I i've been sitting here painfully for an hour and 50 I, I, I don't even know how long i think this I've is great lost, i absolutely love this thank count. you Ali. i have lost count of constructed time you guys should just get married <laughs> you guys should just get married why not or, do or so just Play the fool, take the chance, jump in, throw a ring on it. Allie, do a Beyonce. I'll film you, girl. And oh, just God. get it in. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> well, maybe we'll talk. I don't it. know. It's up to him. I don't know if, you know, it's. I I'm open as we all know. I'm very Allie's fluid open. and open, but Thusu, I know he's got are you rigid open? rules. Is is love really blind, Thusu? I <laughs> thing is, I feel like I bring huh. too much. In, in a way, I feel like I bring too much baggage what? Uh, to this. Meaning that <laughs> I have a lot of hangups when it comes to this my own, like, Libra male over I know, I know. You don't You're have cool. any baggage, sir. I, you have, you have I nothing do. baggage. You're married and you have no children. Therefore, it's exactly. no baggage. But my faith and convictions can be baggage. baggage. Of course they can what? because they can be restrictive and my they can be seen as restrictive and it's theory. And so you, you think tried. your childhood was restrictive? No, my. Um, I think a lot of my beliefs are probably restrictive. That's what I mean. I think my faith can be restrictive because it it just seems like I don't know. Maybe a lot of there's just less and less people I think that kind of share those values, and I think like Alia said. Their experiences, you know, that may have drawn them away from organized religion or faiths, kind of keep them from. Again, I'm going to advocate for the marriage of you two. I, I don't know. Uh, Al, just, I, I just feel like Dusu has set just his sights upon you, man. I don't think what that. Was that? Since when do you advocate marriage? I, I am advocating marriage for these two. Because Thusu, he's a Libra guy. Uh, he stuck to his principles. He put career over, you know, uh, getting married, having kids, all that. So now he's at the point where, you know, 40s range-ish. Uh, and he, he wants love. But he has seen a lot of, you know, just friends and, and different people that he knows go through relationships, divorce, uh, what it is. Uh, he knows textbook relationships, which yeah. again, like true crime is like circumstantial evidence, but he has a good idea of it. For someone who has not experienced it, he does have a very good idea Just, and outlook on it. Yeah. Um, and so we've sort of talked about that. And then Allie is a Just person like that has lived it. What? Just like Ramsland has a good idea of what a serial killer is, yet one may have sat, or a mass murderer, and yet yeah, one I haven't may have sat in her class. Yet if Fusu is a serial killer or just like the most <laughs> perfect male that's ever no, walked just, the face of the planet, I haven't figured Ramsland that out yet. 
thought she knows serial killers or mass murderers inside and out. One may have. Yeah, I mean, Dusu could have fifteen bodies in his backyard right now. Al, I don't know. <laughs> see, and I love every time I say shit like this, he laughs. Like he never denies; he just laughs, and it's that so is fucking true. funny. To me. Hey, if I denied it, that would just make me seem more guilty, wouldn't it? Uh, that yeah. might be what what yeah, a manipulator would, would say. <laughs> yeah. Your laughing is like comforting and then equally eerie. So I'm like, why is he laughing? He's just laughing along with me? Or he's right. like, yeah, you're freaking well, uh, hilarious. Uh, uh, uh. I just buried Larry. As I, yes, I stare right. out into the distance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I don't know. I don't Austin, know let's say you. My what friend Austin's on the phone, guy. you guys. What? I don't know the guy. She's not from Jessica. I'm telling you. <laughs> Has like he been listening? Of everything I did, like me, you know, stuck, you say stuck to his guns and did the whole career thing, was me, on the other hand, I just have mental damage from relationships. <laughs> <laughs> the insane war stories. Thank you for justifying Dusu's way of life. Go. He feels very emphatic about it. Go ahead. Don't feel bad, bro. My buddy was a virgin up until he was like fucking 35. <laughs> Is this encouragement or? <laughs> He's got a way better life than I do. I mean, aside from the alcoholism, but I mean. <laughs> yeah, sure. I don't got alcoholism. You know, uh, on paper, I have a pretty good life. Suffer you know. from alcoholism. This is what I'm trying to say. This, this right. guy right. is either the perfect male. Once again, Ali laughs every time I say that. The perfect male, or a serial killer. Uh, he's one or the other. Like you can't be both, bro. You're one or the other. And I, oh. I feel so. Al. There's middle ground, and there we have. There's seen. middle ground. What, what do you mean? There's like middle. We all ground. have good and bad in ourselves. Okay, what? We all have good and bad in ourselves. Is what I'm saying. He might not be. Are sure. you advocating for a Dexter-like personality, Allie? Because <laughs> um, I'm down with that. But <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm a little vigilanteish. I think. I think if anyone here is perfect, so I mean, honestly, if we're talking about in terms of date, Allie is definitely because you go too far. Perfect. I mean, I mean, I think I'm a catch. I know I'm a catch, but it's definitely you're accommodating, intelligent. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like you are far more perfect than I am because I, again, I I feel like my beliefs are more restrictive and tend to um, exclude people. I, th I feel you're more accommodating. Listen, I, I just want to point out that on the first singles night on crime time with jess we we have had two connections here we had an immediate marriage within the first 30 minutes <laughs> um with nance and i i don't know if it was toe jam or the other guy but they either way we're happy for a while okay yeah no I, but either way they decided to do it here don't take away from that. They got Al. married? Okay, I missed the marriage. We did, uh, right here on oh, the live stream. And then you and Thusu, I, I mean, Thusu is enamored. He is thoroughly enamored with you, Al. I don't feel that, but... I, 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 what? This man can't go two minutes without saying your name. <laughs> Thusu, say it. But Sam. he's he's got like these expectations that I would not fall into. He's so rigid, is what he's saying. So he basically, also is gonna say, have... I'm gonna hood translate this just to make it more entertaining. <laughs> Bitch, I'm not with your problems. Like that's basically what she's saying. Um, well, here's the thing: I have thing. I have so much respect <laughs> for Ali, which is what it would yeah. make me apprehensive. All right. It's because not only do I respect her, I think she's almost too perfect. You know, it's something that's like too good. It's like you come a little. It's like it's right there. Out. And, and why would I do this? It feels too good to be true. Yeah. 
I mean, okay, honestly, Ali, certainly you must see that you are like ideal, you know, wife material. You, you have to see that, right? I, yeah, but like I don't try and I, I'm open to you know, somebody figuring that out about me for sure. Ali, but... all, listen, all, there are good, okay, I'm going to speak as, okay, if you even think there's an ounce of good to me, I'll be honest with you, I do not pursue women out, uh, outside, you know, it's work, you know, gross job, as I mentioned previously, because again, yeah. just who I am, I don't, anyways, if you, if you were to seek out men, um, you would have like an overabundant, a plethora of, of men who would quickly, I mean, again, I don't know, personally, obviously, but you would definitely, it'd be easy, especially at, um, at this age. Now, here's the thing though, um, for me, like at my age, uh, a lot of men, again, um, tend to, and again, I don't want to generalize that. So I, I'm speaking from my own perspective, but a lot of guys get older, um, they don't really go out and try as much, typically. Like, you know, younger guys, obviously, they go out all the time. So maybe just right. switch things up and, like, act the pursuer. You know, what's the old, have you ever heard that old term of um, the man chases the woman until the woman catches him? Like, maybe there's some, some in between. So you're saying you want me to pursue you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yes, I, I think what that's say, the no, message no, no. here. <laughs> what I'm saying, saying though is that um you would you would be so he has much, less energy ali women would <laughs> be so much more like you would so easily you know get a guy if, you know if if you pursue no I, should, I shouldn't say that i i don't know i'm speaking of ignorance but i feel like as a guy though it's so tough to to go out but then again i am i don't do it so maybe again i'm speaking out of ignorance forget what i say <laughs> No, it's, I mean, it's your perspective. That's what's where we all deserve our own perspective from our own lives. It's valid. I think it's valid as well. I concur. I am presiding concur. over this matchmaking. I am <laughs> tapping my gavel ever so lightly with love. There's rosebuds I, I, popping I out the top say... of it. That, that human courtship sickens me and I'm being subjected to this. And I <laughs> that is my friend. Um, <laughs> this is this is my friend now. He feels this is also a Libra male. Uh, so go ahead, Austin. What, what, what was that? Oh, I said, you know, that, that was it. There wasn't much of anything else to it. Something courtship. sickened you. Human courtship sickens me. Human court courtship sickens you. Why yeah. so? Why so? I don't know. It just does. It just does. I mean, I, I, I talked about this earlier. Like the whole dating shit. <laughs> fucking human beings try to fake figuring each other out like some Rubik's Cube. It's, it's, like, a, oh. it's like watching like slow motion accidents happen. Why do I believe you? That's so terrible. That's so terrible. Why can't I have a belief that there's love, Austin? I believe I that love does could. exist. I didn't say you couldn't believe in love. I just yeah, but you kill it. Children. You you I'm paint done. this negative, uh, harmful picture. I want to believe love exists. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Wow, <laughs> that's all. That's all he had. He, he's just done now. Like, dude, so please I speak on I this. Didn't say there was anything wrong with What's believing that? in love or anything like that. I just said the whole like the. The dating shit. I said this earlier. I said, you know, I don't date. I don't go around and yeah. try to meet women or, you know, I just run into them usually. Just run smack into them. Boom. Hey, you want to <laughs> date? Yeah. All right, partner. 
And now he's so jaded. He's like, this is all bullshit. Everyone's wasting your time. Go home. <laughs> take your popcorn. Just you know, stop it. Say that other people are wasting their time. It's just that it makes me human court shit. I don't know. I just never really did the dating thing. Just kind of meet people. Austin, you ab absolutely did anything. I witnessed this. What is wrong with you? I witnessed you date well, someone for three whole years. Like, what? No. Frankie, I, just ran, I ran into Frankie. I didn't. I wasn't out looking for girls. I just ran into her. Okay, that's such a, you know what? I'm not going to hate on this because I do go on and on about humans making things complicated. So you just simplified a whole thing. But there needs to be a little bit of context. Uh, you didn't just run into to Frankie. And I also witnessed you have a three-year dating relationship with someone. Um, so, you know, this is just randomly bumping into people, just things happening. No. You gotta remember, I, I wouldn't really like dating women before that, before Kita either. That just, you dated your daughter's mother. For seven years, but that was several for se years. For several years, yeah. What I was mean, that? What was that? Three years or four years? Four years, something. After a chandice or something like that, maybe longer. Yeah, it was about three or four years. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you definitely... Did he ever marry? Or just dated? He's never married. Austin, you've never married. Unless you did some secret wedding I don't know about. But uh, I mean, me and Kia was engaged. That was it. Yeah, he never married. You non-marrying fool. It's like, listen... Women, women are too non-committal. They never know what they want. Yes. Wow. The misogyny is flowing tonight, folks. And Allie's the generalizations. That's my experience. The women don't know what they want. Allie, to Allie just it. caught it. She just well, said generalizations. And Allie, what do you want? Let's uh, disprove this right now. Who's so taking over? He's asking Allie what she wants. I would, I, you know, I would love to meet someone I am a good partner with. Yes. Of Same, course. Al. Same but now. I'm also not going to force things that aren't that. Yeah, I just, I don't like dating either. It's not fun to just be like told things and whatever if we're not really compatible long term. I'm not really going to do that. Yeah, like you it know? just means you just kind of want things to flow. You don't want anything forced. You want, you, you just kind of want it to flow. And I never have, you know, and there, that's probably why. Tough. That's probably yeah. why I never did it. It's because it, I never, I don't know. I probably never gave a lot of things a chance for a long time because I was so focused on just getting my life right, you know, and my brain and my mental health and my, you know, just situation. I just thought that should be priority. And if I, along the way, run into somebody that is, that fits, then great. But I never prioritized it, I will say. So yeah, I, my picture was I, just bad. <laughs> no, go ahead. What? I didn't Austin. hear Austin. I said my picture was just bad. That's what yeah. I'm saying. I will high five you on that. Pick her off, clearly. Gotta live with it. Uh, these two perfect humans um, opted out of. <laughs> Of uh, Thusu, uh, you can see the private chat, correct? There's a private chat that should be available to you. Okay, I do. Yeah, uh, so there's that. Then that there's that. That's all I'm gonna yeah. say. <laughs> yeah, but. Austin, how long do you think it takes to properly court someone, get to know them, know that they are the person for you? 
like time frame wise, what would you say would be normal in your view? It's not a, there's not an answer. You could meet somebody and know that they're the right one right away, or it could take you 10 years to figure it out. It could be the best friend that you had. You just don't realize that you can try 10 years. There's no right answer to that. There's, there's like so many varying degrees of how people know each other and how people meet each other, what kind of chemistry do they have. There's no real Timing is a lot of it. Yeah, timing timing is definitely a lot of it. I will agree with Ali and with Austin that yeah. there's no real rules on that. It just is. You know? So I don't know. Um there's that. And you guys ready to end this live stream? I'm ready to bow out, but you don't have to end it. <laughs> no, 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 no just... bowing out. I'll just... I'm just, I don't know. It, it's been going for four hours, Al. <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, the time flies when you're having fun. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Oh, out, Am I tapping <laughs> out? Well, I mean, <laughs> I feel like now's a good time to end. And I, I love you guys. Thank you both for coming up and talking and talking Very so openly. Very interesting. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I really fun. enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah. I do. I did as well. All right. I will see you guys later. Love you both. Bye. Bye.